Welcome everyone to our regular planning meeting for April. We have full council in attendance with us this evening. Councillor Link from Ward 1, Councillor Bersetti from Ward 2, Councillor Kleiber from Ward 3, and Councillor Prague from Ward 4. Our CAO Brent Olnick is with us, as well as our planner from Red River Planning, Derek Eno, and Miss Elias, our planner from West St. Paul is with us as well. I will read the resolution to call the meeting to order. Be it resolved that the meeting be called to order and that the agenda for the meeting be adopted as circulated. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Prague, seconded Councillor Bracetti. Any discussion? Go ahead, Councillor Link. Of course, I'm going to be voting to adopt the agendas as they appear on the RM website for the public and on all net for Council. This does not mean I approve of any additions to the agenda items following the end of the meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Link. Any further comments? Hearing and seeing none, I will call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed and that is carried, thank you. No addendums to add to the agenda for this evening. I will read our opening remarks. The RM of West St. Paul strives to be a safe and inclusive community that residents are proud to call home. Where diversity is embraced, the environment is cared for and leadership is valued and trusted. The West St. Paul Council is committed to working as a team to provide good governance, safe and reliable infrastructure, recreational facilities and outdoor spaces that the community can enjoy in a sustainable way that values the environment and is financially prudent. Thank you. We have a number of planning items on our agenda tonight. And before I open up the first uh, planning item, I will read uh, our introduction to public hearings. We are aware that most people who attend our council meetings or view them online for planning matters like the ones here tonight are not completely familiar with how the planning process works. I wanna spend a few minutes providing some additional context so that we all have a better understanding of the process requirements around the Manitoba Planning Act and our local bylaws. Any person can apply for a variance, conditional use, rezoning, or subdivision as per the Manitoba Planning Act. By making the application with West St. Paul's Planning Authority, the Red River Planning District, this does not mean council has endorsed the planning item. When an application is submitted, council is required to hear from the applicant, from those representatives who are attending the public hearing to speak in favor, in opposition, and for more information. It is important to note that Council is being presented with the information at the same time as those in attendance here today. There are procedures Council members must follow once an application is officially filed with the Red River Planning District and until such time as a decision is made. Council members cannot speak with the applicant or any other persons who may be seeking information or want to speak in support or opposition of an open application. This guards against anyone influencing council members before the public hearing and ensures that members of council make their decision based on the same information heard or presented by way of correspondence here tonight. Often residents are frustrated by not being able to speak to their elected officials once an application has been filed, but this is done for these reasons. The Red River Planning District staff can, however, answer questions from the public at any time. The Red River Planning District app accepts applications from residents, developers who want to build houses, sheds, swimming pools, garages, decks, and from those who want to subdivide their lands from one lot splits to multi-lot subdivisions. Red River Planning District staff are professional planners recognized by a professional association and are tasked with researching every application. Their work and recommendations to council are made based on a legal framework, not personal opinions. They review each application against the Manitoba Planning Act, our development plan and our zoning bylaw. They also circulate the application to many other organizations that may be impacted such as Manitoba Infrastructure, the Public School Finance Board, Sustainable Development, Gas, Hydro and adjacent municipalities such as the City of Winnipeg, East St. Paul, Rockwood to name a few. Red River Planning staff do this to determine if the application meets all legal requirements. At the public hearings, council hears from many delegations and we will ultimately decide if the application is a good fit for the community and if it will be approved. We consider both the legal requirements the planner has researched as well as feedback from our community. And that is our 
plan for this evening, just providing an overview of our process. And I will read the resolution to open our first public hearing for this evening. Be it resolved that this meeting of council recess for the purpose of holding a public hearing pursuant to section 96A of the Planning Act. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Link, seconded Councillor Busetti. Any discussion? Hearing and seeing none, I will call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed? Um, Councillor Clyber, I didn't see your vote on that matter. I raised my hand in favor. Oh, sorry, I didn't see. I just saw you scratching your nose. That is a vote in favor, and that is carried. Mr. Planner, I will turn it over to you to uh, to share your report to Council. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'm just going to uh, share my screen with Council. Just give me a second here. Thank you. So as you noted, this is variance application 19 of 2022. It's for a property located at 67 Deerman Road and is to allow for a reduced front yard uh, for an extension or an addition, sorry, to a existing single family home within the uh, rural residential overlay zone. So the rural, re rural residential overlay zone has a minimum front yard setback of 50 feet as well as uh, there's a special requirement for Deerman Road that indicates that the, uh, the front of the house has to be either within 75 feet and 125 feet from the front set or front lot line. The applicant's addition would place them at about 37 feet from the front lot line. And here is the subject property. It's about five acres in size, located in the, uh, in the existing rural residential neighborhood. And here's their site plan that shows the uh, existing lots with the uh, existing buildings and where the proposed addition is going to be located and just a little zoomed in version of uh, of that drawing showing the proposed addition at the front of the house on screen here i've also indicated uh roughly i mean it's not uh it's it's gis based and not uh not a survey drawing but to give you a sense of where that 75 foot setback is and the 125 foot setback. So between those two red lines, uh, houses are supposed to, new houses are supposed to be located in there. There are some houses that are outside that area. They would have built, been built before uh, the regulations came into effect a couple of councils uh, ago. And here's just zoomed in again, showing the, uh, showing the existing house. It's well within that, uh, that red area, the front setback. And um, and the once again the addition is going to be placed to the the front of the property. Um, we have no concerns with this application. If the applicant does want to uh, is successful in in obtaining this, uh, we do recommend that there be a couple of conditions added for council's consideration. One is that the variance is limited to thirty seven feet from the front yard setback, and any uh, any changes will require a new variance application. So I'd have to come back to council. Number two, the applicant owner obtains all required permits from uh, the, the Red River Pine District. And number three, that the applicant owner obtains a letter of clearance from the Arm of West St. Paul, just to ensure that the property is in compliance with all applicable uh, RM bylaws. That's all I have at this point, Madam Mayor. Uh, if council has any questions, I'd be happy to try and answer them. Thank you, Mr. Eno. I will go around our virtual council table here. Councillor Kleiber, any questions for Mr. Eno? Mr. Eno, what are they exactly on this variance? What exactly are they adding to um, the front of the house? It's uh, in addition to the front of the house. Uh, if you bear with me just a quick second, I'm just going to check my file, see if they have any details in there. They're proposing to have uh, some more living space as well as an attached garage. Okay, and so they haven't uh, explored the possibility of adding to the back. They're just for, why is it that they're particular about the, they're wanting to do it on the front? I'm not sure, but perhaps the applicant can answer that. Okay, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. 
Thank you, Councillor Pereg. Any questions for our planner? Yeah, I have um, a similar question that Councillor Kleiber had. Like, why not the back or the sides of the house and not in front? Because we, I know in the past, we mean, Council have received a lot of phone calls of uniformity in subdivisions, like coming to the road and, you know, houses in and out. It doesn't look appealing to people. That's all I have to say. Yeah, I guess just in response to that, uh, Ma Madam Mayor, I, I don't have the layout of the house, so I'm not sure if it makes more sense to put it at the front, if there's some internal um, layout that's, uh, uh, that would be difficulty with that. Um, the house was built sometime around 1964, so, so we don't actually have any old historical plans since the Pine District was formed in 77. So. But once again, perhaps maybe the applicant can shed some light on that. Thank you. Councillor Bussetti, any questions for Mr. Eno? Um, a lot of the same questions as my the other councillors, so I'm just going to wait till the applicant comes up. Thank you. And Councillor Link, any questions for our planner? Yes. Um, in the report um, on page two, the statements made that the existing dwelling had an existing setback of approximately 80 feet. Further down on the page, on the second bullet, the existing house on the subject property has a front yard setback. So is the, front, is the current front yard setback 80 feet? Yes. Okay. And the extension, what are the dimensions of the extension? If, if they want to add, it's 80 feet back, they want to add something uh, that's going to bring up to being 37 feet from the road, then their addition is going to be 43 feet in addition to the house. That's pretty big. And I would also wonder why uh, they wouldn't be adding to the front. Um, also, I have a concern about um, the site plan. If we look at the site plan, could you bring it up? Of course I can, just hold on a quick Thanks. second. Thanks, great. Here we go. I'll just go to the zoomed in version there. Yeah, this is, yeah, this is good. This is good. Uh, it shows that this is existing barn or garage is 30 feet away. Now, uh, my, now it looks on this that it, and, and uh, the setback for the house after the pros, proposed addition is going to be 37 feet. It looks very close to the 30. What I'm concerned about is I, the site plan is not to scale. It's not accurate. I understand that's all you require is a site plan. I guess it can be hand drawn, but should, shouldn't the applicant be presenting a survey certificate to Red River showing the present setback? an accurate picture of the setback of the dwelling, what it will be. For sure, excellent question. Um, as, as you noted, sorry, I'll just stop just that so you can see my face. As you, uh, as you noted, um, uh, all we require is, is a drawing that the applicant has, has provided. That's the bare minimum. Should they be providing a, uh, a survey quality drawing? I mean, that would be much more useful and maybe helpful to know exactly where things are. Um, the, um, I, I guess I can say the, the downside to not doing that is that the applicant takes on a level of risk in that if council were to approve this and they got uh, detailed architectural drawings done, survey drawings and found out that, oops, they actually needed a little bit more of a variance, they'd have to come back to council or adjust their, their plans. 
Well, I, I really um, don't believe that there's enough accurate information here to make a decision. I'm having a problem with this one for that reason. That's all. Yeah, and unfortunately, we don't have a BLC or a building location certificate or anything like that on file. So, sorry, I have another question. Of course. Uh, 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 is an accessory building allowed to be closer to the road than the existing house? No, there is a minimum setback, but uh, besides the minimum setback, there's a provision in your zoning bylaw for the rural areas that say that the, uh, um, I'm going to get the wording incorrect, but it's, it's the, generally it states that the accessory building has to be behind the front face of, of the house. So it can't be in front of the house. Um, what's there right now is existing. It would have been built long before your bylaws came into effect. So you grandfather that in? Exactly. Okay. Thank you. That's all. Just a couple questions from me. Um, just on in terms of the drawing where you had uh, the uh, measuring tool there and you went down the streetscape of what it looks like currently. I was yes. just wondering if you could please bring that up again. I just want to take a look at that. Of course. This one. Oh, sorry. Can't see that. I wasn't sharing my screen. How about there? Can you see that? Yes. yes. Let me just blow that up. There we go. So is there any way for you to show us a line of where 7, 37 feet, what that looks like on there? So that's the 75 to the 125. Uh, kind of an indication of where 37 feet would bring us. What I can do is I can, uh, I can bring up the, uh, the GIS air photo and I can kind of draw a little line to kind of show you where that is on the subject property, if that's helpful. Yes, thank you. Just, uh, just bear with me a quick moment here. Okay, here's the air photo of the property as, as close in as I can uh, as I can zoom it. And oops. So from the property line. It's somewhere, can you see where my cursor is? It's, it's somewhere around there. So that barn garage that Councillor Link had talked about, on the picture it shows it 30 feet away, but here that's still quite a ways set back. Uh, so from the GIS, it looks 40-ish feet okay. away. Um, I, I will note that I don't believe these are satellite images. I, I think they're, they're oblique images, so taken from a, a bit of an angle. So it might be a little bit off between the measuring tool and the actual air photo. But it's in the ballpark. Okay. Oops. And then I guess just one, one more question um, from me regarding... Our uh, bylaw 2015-15P, 14P, sorry, uh, on the streetscape bylaw that we did uh, as the council in 2015, yeah. uh, and the 75 foot to 125 foot range, and how that works with our zoning bylaw then, where 50 feet would be acceptable, does the streetscape bylaw that previous council approved, does it overlay, override? 
the zoning or it's a suggestion uh, because I know that that can be confusing probably not just for council yeah. but for the applicant because we had something in place to ensure a consistent streetscape and if I remember correctly council at the time and staff spent a lot of work GPSing homes on lots of streets including Dearman so that if there was ever infill that it would really be consistent how do the two our zoning bylaw and that bylaw work together so what I would suggest is that you view uh, those additional that range as oh sorry I'm sorry to interrupt I do see that Councillor Cliver has left the meeting I don't know if you want to pause and get her back on before you continue the public hearing Thank you, Ms. Shaw. Yes, we should, or she will not be able to vote if she's missing a portion. Thank you for pointing that out. We'll just pause for a sec. Sorry, Mr. Eno. No problem. Councillor Link? I'm getting a message from Councillor Cliver that is addressed to you, Mayor Christian, mm -hmm. to uh, all the other councillors and myself, that um, she's having a recurring problem with her uh, video and she's trying to get back on. Do you not have that message? Yes, I sent her a message just that we're waiting for her, that we've stopped uh, the public hearing to wait for her so she will have an opportunity to continue to hear uh, the public hearing and be able to vote. And she has replied, I will call in. I am trying to uh, reboot. So Thank we're, you. yeah. Hello, I'm here. Great, thank you, Councillor Kleiber. I was asking Mr. Eno about uh, the uh, zoning bylaw and the 50 foot requirement for this uh, zone and the uh, bylaw 24, 2015-14P, the 75 foot to 125 foot streetscape requirement and how those uh, work together, Mr. Eno. 
For sure. No, good question. Um, so in the bylaw, there's there's a list of uh, streets um, where there's these these ranges of minimum maximums for the front wall of uh, of the house. Uh, where a property is located on one of those streets, uh, that rule takes precedence. Um, so how you would view it is that in this case, it's an RRO zone. The minimum setback is 50 feet, but because Deerman is listed as, as one of those streets with a requirement of a range, you take the range. So not every street in West St. Paul is listed there. So, so that's, how we, uh, that's how we interpret that. Um, when we do have variances like this, our staff does like to uh, list both the requirements just so that everything's covered. So, uh, so there's no, uh, no confusion that one variance was missed or, or anything like that. Thank you, Mr. Eno. I appreciate the clarification because for those watching or even for council with both listed in the uh, report, that's the difference of a 10 foot request versus a 40 foot request that they're requesting a 38 foot variance based on that requirement that we had added in 2015. Madam Mayor, I do have that uh, portion of the bylaw uh, on my computer. Would it be helpful just to show that? For, okay, sure. Let me just uh, share my screen just for a quick second here. So, so here's the bulk table. You can see the listing of all the zones along the, the left-hand side. You can see front setback or front yard, the setback requirements. There's a rural residential 50. And then as you scroll down, you have all the different zones and all the different bulk requirements. But then there's the special front yard requirement. You can see there's a listing of various different streets that have these different ranges there. So. So that's what we're talking about, I guess, if there's anyone watching and uh, not not entirely sure. I think as Councillor, I think it was Councillor Prague who noted that uh, uh, these were put in place by previous councils just to ensure that when new houses get put up, that there's some continuity or, or some um, uh, conformity along the street, that you don't have one house set back at 50 feet, another house set back at 200 feet, it creates this disjointed look. So. Thank you so much. Those are all my questions. I think it's good to clarify that when we're when we've got a couple of existing numbers floating around. So thank you. All right, uh, Miss Elias, uh, are the applicants uh, online at all and wanting to speak to their application? Yes, Madam Mayor, we have Danielle Peters with us this evening. She's registered in support. Thank you, Miss Peters. Are you able to hear us? Okay. Yeah, I can hear you. And my husband, Trevor, is here. He'll be talking for me. Welcome to you both. I will turn it over to both of you. Um, you can comment on what the planner uh, has talked about and, and provide any additional clarity uh, and information that you think would help council make this decision tonight. For sure. Thank, first of all, thanks for having us. And uh, what I might say first off is uh, in response to Councillor Link's uh, questions regarding uh, having a, um, what word am I looking for here? Have uh, someone come out and get proper measurements. Um, that's definitely something that uh, I'm assuming would be a condition of permit. Um, just because typically in, I am in the building uh, industry, so I've, uh, I've worked for companies before where we've, we've had to do that. So provided we would get uh, the variance, that would definitely be uh, something we'd be willing to do. Um, this was the original house on the street here, um, which is why the setback is what it is. Um, nothing was built around, everything was built around it um, later. Um, so what we're looking to do is to bring the property up to more of a modern look, and so it fits in better with the community. That being said, um, we've looked at uh, the house and how we can put a garage on it and have it so that it would look nice. And this is the, the best fit that we have for this particular house. Thank you for the additional information. I will go around our virtual council table here and see if councillors have uh, any questions for you both. Councillor Link, I will start with you. Any questions for the applicants? So, uh, was it Trevor? I'm sorry. Uh, yes, Trevor. Okay. Hi, Trevor. Um, you, you're saying that there was an original house and you have built around it already? Is, is that what you said? No, 
No, this is the existing house that was on the street, and all the rest of the homes on this block have been built around it, which is why they're set back. Okay, to all right, okay. Yeah, this is an old, old home. Uh, yeah. Um, about how the home as it is now, how far back from that old um, barn or shed how much further back is 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 your current home from that barn or shed? Do you know? I would say it's roughly. Uh, that's hard to say without actually measuring, but uh, I would say the front of our house is roughly even with the back of the building so the width of the building so it's probably around 30 feet to 40 feet further back okay that, that's a ballpark I, i'm not uh, okay yeah i understand i understand thank you councillor link councillor bassetti any questions for the applicants uh, yes. Okay. Um, have you started any of the? You have I obviously haven't started any of the changes yet. Is there any other plans that you'd look at if this was denied? To, uh, I guess, off the side, off the back. Is there any other way? It, I just hope you understand what we're. A lot of us are saying here is, it, it's so far out of the realm of the rest of the street that it it's making it difficult. Like it's not even close. It's it's going to be standing right out. Um, I, I would disagree with that strongly. Um, some of the images shown there um, by um, the Red River Planning District, it doesn't clearly show uh, where the houses are. I know the second house from Blackdale Road is much closer to the street than that. So we would be fairly well in line with that as well as the house, I believe four houses down from us further west. So we would be, um, you know, within a couple of feet of newer homes on the street. So it, it would definitely be within um, the community's appearances. There's no doubt with that. And to answer your question, um, you know, I think I would appreciate on council's part anyway, um, we've had zero of the community members from our street oppose it. So I think that shows that uh, they would look forward to having this done. Um, and uh, I think if it was denied, um, we would probably end up uh, not doing the project just because it, it doesn't fit the house. Um, that's the whole purpose of having a, a variance application is to ask request permission out of what has been originally requested by the municipality. If, if we were within current guidelines, we wouldn't need a variance. So that's the whole reason why we're asking for variance. Does that answer your question? Yes, it does. But I'm just, I'm, the only reason I'm asking it is because it, it's almost double the route. The, the numbers that are being allowed here that we get a lot of variances in you know one foot five feet out of the out of the area but this is half of the minimum that is being allowed you know for, yes, for the area you, which is 75 to 150 or 125 but your variances will be on new construction so we can't we're not comparing apples to apples here this is an old neighborhood and we're looking to uh to upgrade and have it so it actually does fit in with the community No further questions, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kleiber, any questions for the applicants? Uh, good, good evening, sir. I just wanted to know, what is it that you're actually wanting to add here? What is it that you're adding to the house? Well, we're adding a mudroom and a double car garage. Okay, and so what you're saying to us as council is you cannot add that to the back or the side. It doesn't fit with the, with the house. Um, this is our current entrance. 
um, it would uh, it wouldn't work with the design the design of the home. It wouldn't fit in with that design. Um, okay. So the you back could of do post a garage. And Pardon. Add a small right. Pardon. You could do a detached garage and add a small bedroom to the front, which would not then exceed it, would it? Because you're asking yeah. for quite a lot as far as the variance goes. So what well, we're trying really. to if do we're is looking find a solution that would work for you. Every house on our street has an attached garage. Um, if we're looking at being congruent with the neighborhood, um, having an attached garage yeah. with a lesser frontage would be more congruent. Yeah, I, I don't think we're looking at necessarily being congruent with the aesthetics as much as we're looking with being congruent with the bylaw. And the yeah, but that's the whole that's, point in having variance. That's a little more important here. So it doesn't matter so, if it doesn't fit in with the community? It does and it doesn't because we have a bylaw that we're supposed to be following, right? So, you know, how much are we going to allow outside of that bylaw? And as Councillor Buschetti said, um, we've allowed maybe a foot, maybe five feet, but we've never allowed uh, what you're asking for. And I, I don't know that it would be congruent with the neighbourhood if you're that far out and that close to the road because the setbacks in that, on that street, are much further back. So you wouldn't be congruent with the neighbourhood. Aesthetically, you might be. But as far as your setback would be, you wouldn't be. But I thank you for your time and, and for answering my questions. Appreciate that. Thank you. Councillor Preg, any questions for our applicants? Yes, Trevor, you said you were, you're a builder? I've worked, I've worked for a builder. So okay. I've, uh, I've, I've, I've constructed homes before, yes. Good, Trevor. Trevor, what? Um, I know the garage will take up a lot in front. Um, how big is your property there? We have three, I believe it's 330 feet of frontage. It's, it's, it's two, two and a half acre lots that we have here. Um, did you ever think of putting a, a wraparound garage so that will eliminate the problem, a wraparound garage? Is that uh, something I'm thinking of the cops? As, as I stated earlier, it, it doesn't fit the way the interior of the house is with the bedrooms and the layout. Um, no. Okay, thank no. you very much. Go ahead. No, it, it's not something we've considered. It's, uh, if, if we're going to do something, we'd like to do it right and have it so that it looks looks nice and has good, good curb appeal. And this is, this is what we have to do to make that happen. Okay, and, I, and I appreciate your questions. And uh, I think if, uh, you know, providing you guys would provide us with the variance, um, guaranteed, it would definitely bring um, good curb appeal to the property and it wouldn't stick out uh, in, in, in the houses on the street here. Thank you, Trevor. Thank you so much. No problem. you just um one uh comment concern for me i, I appreciate um you guys wanting to do an addition and housing is expensive now and and for families expanding or wanting to have more rooms in garages i understand uh the the drive behind additions and can appreciate what you guys are trying to do um one of the concerns that i have typically council sees a visual of what's going to happen and we don't have anything in front of us of what exactly we would even be approving and it's really not very typical on a variance to to be requesting for an addition, but council to have no information on exactly what you're doing. And so uh, I, I believe you both when you're saying that it would look nice and it would tie in nice uh, and it would be aesthetically pleasing. And uh, I don't doubt that. But council doesn't have any diagrams, any information of what this looks like. Um, there's nothing in the application at all about the garage, the mudroom, and what you're trying to do and how that fits in uh, and what we would be approving. So for me, that's kind of a missing link and a, and a piece of, I can't see what it is you, you are wanting to do. That's, that's unfortunate that that wasn't requested. Um, we do have renderings of the proposed project um, here, which I would love to share with you. Um, 
if council doesn't request that, um, I'm not uh, a planner. I'm not, I just go by what you guys are asking for. We have it. It's, it's here on our, it's literally on my desk here right beside me. If you guys could see it, um, that, uh, that would be there. It wasn't requested. It's not pertinent to this application actually. No, I, I appreciate that. And, you know, we always, uh, people submit everything that they can to help council make a decision of what, what you're doing. Um, and so I know our planners ask for whatever information is related to the variance and, and letters explaining what it is that you're wanting to do to help us make a decision about what's happening. And just from my perspective, it's hard, hard for me to make a decision without seeing what exactly you're doing and bringing closer to the road like that. So. I understand that hundred percent. I would have, uh, yeah, I think that'd be a great idea if you guys could see that. And uh, maybe, um, uh, maybe we could do an approval based on uh, on seeing some of those. And uh, and uh, like I said, the, the the project will be beautiful. And uh, it's it's one of those things. I'm not. Uh, I don't apply for variances every day. I don't do hearings every day. So I'm not uh, familiar with the whole process here as you would be. Right, we're going to see if there's anyone registered in, in support, opposition, or for information, and then we'll come back to both of you, and you'll have an opportunity to comment if there is anybody registered wanting to speak to the application as well. Ms. Elias, do we have anyone else registered in support, opposition, or for information wanting to speak on this application? No one else registered on this issue. Yeah, you can send it immediately. Thank you. Uh, I'm not sure if you have anything available, Mr. Peters, on your computer in terms of sharing with council, because you might have the ability to share with council if you have it readily available. Um, mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's we're not able to make accommodations in terms of the diagrams unless you had it really easily available to share. Uh, just give me one minute. Danielle is trying to pull it up here. How, How would you like us to send it to you? Ms. Elias, are you able to share your uh, email address and, and he can send that right now to pull up? Would that be acceptable? Or give me permission. Yep. Or Ms. Shaw, give permission to, uh, to share the screen, if you can do that, if you've got it and you're able to share on our screen. If it, if it works for Ms. Peters, we can um, set it up so that she can share her screen. Otherwise, it, it can be sent to uh, my email, um, just to edo at weststpaul.com. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I have updated the permissions, so uh, Mr. and Mrs. Peters could share their screen if they try. Uh, just a quick question for you, Mayor Christian. Are we now adding to the application or is it okay for us to do this? That, that, I'm just wondering that. I'll refer that to Mr. Eno. Mr. Eno, are you all right that we're asking him for additional information in this way? Oh, for sure. A public hearing is, uh, is, is meant for applicants and the public to uh, present information to council. So it's, it's quite, I know we haven't been in person for a while, but it's quite typical for people just to bring paper copies uh, of, of, of items to a council chambers. I don't see this being any different. Thank you. Thank you. Good question, Councillor Kleiber. And the main thing is we're getting all the information at the same time as a council, seeing all the information and looking at it at the same time. Can you guys see? We can see that it says you are sharing screen. So we can see it looks like it's your phone, but I, we don't see a photo yet.
Maybe just on the picture that I just sent you and share that. Just bear with us here. No idea. Mr. and Mrs. Peters, why don't we give you five minutes? And if you want to try emailing it to our uh, our economic development officer, Miss Elias at EDO at weststpaul.com. We'll take a five minute break and just give you guys a few minutes if you wanna send it that way and we can pull it up on the screen and then you can point out to council the features of the edition. Would that be okay? Absolutely. Yes, that sounds fine. Uh, give fine. us two seconds, it'll be sent. Good, we'll do that. We'll take a five minute recess. Councillor Link, go ahead. I'm sorry, but since there's an email going on with uh, a rendering. Is it possible to also send a picture of your home, uh, maybe from the front of the house, so we can look at how far back it currently is? I don't know if you have such a picture available, but that would help. You can take something. Uh, I don't think we have something currently available, but. Uh um i think with the rendering you should get a pretty good idea on what it is if it wasn't stormy out i'd be happy to go take one now <laughs> okay, that's fine mr eno go ahead uh madam mayor when we come back from this quick break uh perhaps i can bring up a, a google street view maybe that'll help thank you mr eno sure that's great so we'll take five minutes uh 6 55 we'll come back and that'll give everybody a chance to be organized Mr. and Mrs. Peters, I want you to have the opportunity to present the information that you have for Council. Thank you very much.
adding the the footage of the garage as an extension uh, more than what currently is there. Thank you. I'll ask if any council members have any additional questions seeing the image of their addition plans. Go ahead, Councillor Link. <clears throat> What's the distance uh, between the existing house then and the edge of your garage after the two doors fell? Is it an extra 40, 43 feet? No, it would be 29 feet, I believe. So you have a door, a porch, and two two bays for the garage, and that's only going to be how many feet? Sorry? The, the garage is 29. Give me one second here. I can give you that actual measurement. 13. So the entrance area would be 13, and then the garage is 27 inside measurement. So it'll be 28 outside. So 41 feet, 41 yes. feet, extending 41 feet from the current house. All right, thank you. Any other questions from council? Well, not the current house, we're removing eight feet. Seeing no further questions, then thank you, Mr. and Mrs. Peters, for uh, for the explanation. And I will uh, move to uh, close our public hearing, and council can decide on this matter. Thank you both for being in attendance tonight. Thank you kindly. Appreciate your consideration. Be it resolved that council do hereby close the public hearing and resume the regular meeting of council. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Bissetti, seconded Councillor Link. Any further discussion? Hearing and seeing none, I will call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed, and that is carried. Thank you. And I will read the resolution that we have then on this item. Whereas an application for variance order 19-22 was received for the property located at 67 Deerman Road to reduce the front yard setback from required 50 foot minimum and i'm sorry i'm going to stop there so mr eno is it not a 75 foot requirement based on our bylaw is it a 50 foot minimum or the our zoning bylaw requires 75 foot minimum on this street 75 okay so should the resolution read from required 75 foot minimum in for a RR rural residential overlay zone on Deerman Road? Correct. Thank you. So I'm gonna change that wording. And 75, okay, sorry. And 75 foot minimum for a new home located on Deerman Road, thank you, to 37 feet. And whereas under the provisions of the Planning Act, a public hearing has been held to hear representation both for and against the application. Therefore, be it resolved that after careful consideration, Council of the RM of West St. Paul hereby approves variation order 1922 with the following conditions. One, this variance is limited to 37 feet front yard setback as proposed within this application. Any changes will require a new variance approval. Two, applicant owner to obtain all required permits and approvals from the Red River Planning District. Three, applicant owner to obtain a letter of clearance from the RM of West St. Paul to ensure that the property is in compliance with the applicable RM bylaws. A variance order will expire and cease to have any effect if it is not acted upon within 12 months of the date of the the decision. A board council or planning commission may extend the deadline under subsection one for an additional period not longer than 12 months if an application is received before the initial deadline. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Link, seconded Councillor Brusetti. Any further discussion on the application? Councillor Kleiber, go ahead. Well, this is in my ward and I normally would like to uh, support my residents. 
uh, just feel this is really outside the parameters of the setback and uh, it's asking a lot. And I, th I think that in my opinion, uh, I would like to stay with what the setback is. And it, while it looks like a nice addition, we might have to reconfigure something so that it fits within our bylaw. And that's just my opinion. Councillor Kleiber, any other comments on the application? Hearing and seeing none, I will request a recorded vote and I will call for the vote. All those in favor? Opposed? And that is defeated. Okay, we will move on to our next application. Be it resolved this meeting of council recess for the purpose of holding a public hearing pursuant to section 105 of the Planning Act. Mr. Eno, I will turn it over to you. Thank you, ma'am. I'm just going to share my screen once again with council. There we go. So this is conditional use application number five of 2022. It's for a property located at 3176 Main Street. And the purpose of the application is to allow outdoor storage or exterior storage in the commercial highway zone. So here's the uh, subject property uh, that has uh, Windsor plywood on it. And here is a site plan that they've provided with um, uh, Main Street to the right of your uh, of your screen and the uh, outdoor storage area located to the bottom of your screen or south of the uh, of the existing building. So a, uh, a, a lumber yard or lumber and building supply outdoor storage is a conditional use within your within your zoning bylaw. Uh, so that's why this has come uh, come to you. The applicant is obviously requesting that they uh, they be allowed to uh, do some outdoor storage. It would have to meet other requirements within uh, your zoning bylaw for fencing and the like. And if council does wish to approve this, we would uh, have a few conditions here, or suggestions. Number one, the first condition is that the conditional use would be limited to what's proposed in this application. Any changes would have to come back to council. So any expansion of outdoor storage from what the applicants illustrated would have to come back to council. Number two, that they obtain all required permits from both our office, uh, the, the arm of West St. Paul, as well as Manitoba infrastructure if required. We're not sure if they need something from Manitoba infrastructure, but that's usually the case when you're within close proximity to a, uh, to a main highway. Number three, that the applicant owner provide the ability for the arm of West St. Paul Fire Department to access the property should public access be restricted after uh, building hours. Once again, we're dealing with uh, building and lumber, so, and lumber um, uh, products being stored outside. Uh, heaven forbid there's ever a fire, but we want, uh, want your fire department to have some sort of access to there uh, for firefighting. And uh, the fourth condition is that the storage of building materials shall be prohibited from the front yard. So the applicants indicated on the site plan where the storage would be, we just wanna make it abundantly clear that it's not to be outdoor storage along Main Street there. That's all I'm I have, Madam Mayor. If you have any uh, questions, I'd be uh, happy to answer them. Thank you, Ms. Shaw, go ahead. I apologize, I did not record the, the vote to open that public hearing. Uh, if you could repeat the, the mover and seconder, please. Sure, does anyone recall who moved that? I did not write down or take note of who moved it. I think Councillor Bassetti did, and I think I seconded it. Thank you. Does that seem right, Councillor Bassetti? I I didn't. Sure. I don't remember anybody opening the public hearing. I remember us closing it, but I don't remember an opening. If if you could be so kind, Madam Mayor, to, to take the vote to open. Thank you. Good news is these meetings are recorded. <laughs> Sorry, Ms. Shaw. I'm not taking note of who's who's moving and seconding. The two screens going in, I'm not taking note of that. Mr. Planner, are uh, you're 
finish with your report? Yes, ma'am. Yep. Thank you. All right, I will go around our council table here. Councillor Preg, any questions for Mr. Eno on this application? Mr. Eno, this outdoor storage will be in the fence compound, am I correct? That's correct, yeah. Okay, thank you. I'll leave um, for the questions for the applicant. Thanks. Councillor Fiber, any questions for Mr. Eno? Um, I noticed this is a reapplication for a conditional use because the conditional use was violated and the conditional use was removed. So what was the issue that uh, had occurred previously? I'm not sure. I'm just looking at my notes here. I'm not sure exactly wh what the violation was. It was just noted that in uh, in 2002, a conditional use was uh, was approved, and um, after that, it was revoked in 2009 by council uh, because the applicant had violated the outdoor storage location that was approved by by council. So I'm not sure if there was one spot where they were allowed to do it, and then they chose to do it in another spot. Okay, so they, they might have overstepped their um, allotted area, perhaps. Is that, that what you're, you're saying, possibly? That might have been the case. We didn't have any records on the, uh, on the council discussion at that time. Okay, well, I'll, I guess I'll leave, reserve that for the applicant. Okay. And um, just to confirm, our bylaw reading tonight would remove any uh, exterior storage on a commercial highway zone. Is that correct? Our bylaw I'm, reading would eliminate that now. I'm sorry. Okay, never mind. Don't worry about it. Oh, okay. We'll talk about it later. Thanks. Okay. Councillor Bissetti, any questions for our planner? Now, uh, just to clarify, uh, on the images, it's showing the property right from Main Street to the tracks. And uh, it's been split up or there's like Windsor Way now is splitting up the, I'm gonna say the Easterly property closer to Main Street. Then there's now Windsor Way with another storage compound to the west of that. And then I guess there's a third lot behind that. Is this just gonna be for the Windsor Plywood location, which is right at Main Street? So or is this is something I should ask the applicant? It is for all of Windsor Plywood. It is only one title right now. There is the new roads that are uh, proposed to go in that, that kind of makes it look like it's split up a little bit. But it's just for Windsor Plywood. Okay, and the only reason I'm asking is the backs, the part closest to the tracks right now has no fencing. It's all one title, but there's a fencing on the, I'm gonna say the store location, then I guess their overflow, which is west of Windsor Way and then there's another spot behind that between the overflow and the track so I would just like to make sure it's in one of those fenced in areas and it doesn't exceed that and and one more thing I think I should I, I have to bring it up is I, I see it at other lumber stores I, I don't want to see the, the the storage exceeding the fence by you know double the height of a fence where they're putting racks on with multiple layers of lumber, that kind of stuff. It's just, there's gonna be residential around there. There could be other, you know, high-end stores, that kind of stuff being brought around that. So you don't really wanna show it at your first drive-in that that's being your, I'm gonna say right out in front of you, so. Yeah, maybe, uh, maybe Councillor, I'll, I'll just bring the, their site plan back up just to illustrate again where exactly the storage is gonna be. Oops. So the storage is gonna be just south of the actual building. It looks like there's a fence that will go, can you see my cursor? Okay, so it looks like there's gonna be a fence that'll be flush with the, I'll say the, the main street uh, front of the building. And then this will all be uh, a fenced area. So it's going to be just self and just a little bit behind is what's is what I'm seeing here. Well, that that was not 
the south end that you were at on Windsor Way, that's actually the west end. And then that backside where your cursor is now would be the north side. Is it? Well, I'm sorry, perhaps I'm, uh, perhaps I mixed up there. Um, as to the, uh, the storage above the fencing, the bylaw states that there has to be a, uh, a fence uh, with a minimum of six feet, maximum of eight feet. So they could do, put an eight foot fence. If council's concerned about things going beyond the height of the fence, you could always add another condition that says uh, uh, outdoor storage of materials should not exceed the height of the fence. If they wanted to do that, they'd have to come back to council for a variance. I'd like to see that, but that's just my opinion. I don't know how the rest of council thinks. So. Thank you. Okay. Councillor Link, any questions for Mr. Eno? Yes, could I see the site plan one more time, please? For sure. Here we go. Okay, now Windsor Way is to the right on my screen. So Perhaps where's, Main, where's Main Street? Yeah. So it's oriented like that. They give yeah. it upside down, is that? Okay. All right. Okay, that makes sense to me now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, makes, that makes better sense to me too. Um, now I'm gonna wonder aloud, is council to consider this application in the light that this property is part of S202871, which was approved at West St. Paul Council January 6th of 2021 and conditionally at Red River subsequent to that. And yeah, uh, this, the, the Johnners property it is lot six, nine and 12 of the subdivision. Um, so this application only has to do with lot six only. I guess I can say it's it to deal with the Eastern property. So that okay. subdivision hasn't been completed yet. Okay, but it would it was planned to be lot six was Windsor Plywood's location. Lot I six. That's correct. Um, now um, plans um, that are on um, the owners uh, or the owner's representative website uh, appear to definitely include RMF-2 dwellings. Does, does uh, if council previously considered this whole subdivision as a commercial subdivision, but that concept appears now to have gone by the wayside, according to what I see on uh, websites that are open to the public. Um, and we're contemplating tonight some pretty, a first reading of a, of a bylaw that's going to remove um, uh, this property from a, a commercial highway designation to a new designation that won't allow um, outside storage. So what, what um, if we say this is fine, what, what's the implication to the, new, to the new zoning coming and getting first reading? I think I understand where you're coming from. So there, there is another zoning bylaw tonight, as you noticed, for a first reading, which is some uh, some text amendments. I guess I'll say, uh, under that bylaw, there are no uh, rezonings of properties taking place. 
So this property would not be rezoned. Uh, there's a new zone that's going to be added into the zoning bylaw. That's what's being proposed, but it's not being attributed to any specific properties. So maybe that puts that part to rest. The property itself today is a uh, commercial highway CH zone. Uh, so if the applicants would want to do any residential types of uses, you noted an, an RFM, I think you said one uh, zone that they indicated on their on their website, they'd have to come to council for a rezoning. And we'd have to evaluate that against the uh, the, the secondary plan, and and if that's uh, if that kind of fits. My recollection of this area and the secondary plan is that it's uh, it's a commercial type of an area. That so, was so my council, recollection too, sir. Yeah, so council would get would get a uh, uh, I guess a, a look over and a final say. I guess is what I could say if uh, if the applicant wanted to do anything else than a commercial type of a use. Does that answer it? Um, uh, there was a resident that sent us all a um, question. And um, are, are, are questions from residents being read out tonight? Or um, is that the case? Or can I ask the question that was asked by the resident? You can, but when we get to um, when council's finished asking questions of our planner, then I'll go to Miss Elias, as has been our practice, and say, Is there anyone registered in support, opposition, or for information? And she will uh, talk about the correspondence that she's received and if anyone is here to speak uh, for opposing or for information here tonight. So she will address um, the information that's been submitted if and if there's any other ones that have been submitted. It's probably best to let her present the information we've received from residents. Okay, that's good. Uh, uh, in, in some cases, the residents find out that the letters haven't been read out. But so I'm glad to hear that. Um, thank you. And Councillor Prague, any questions for Mr. Eno? Uh, he's already asked me questions. I already did. Thank you. Councillor Kleiber. Um, this area here is going to be, from my understanding, completely commercial. It's going to be in a commercial area. The roundabout is going to have commercial buildings. So what would be the difference between this conditional use and let's say if a Home Depot came in? So let's say a Home Depot came in and they wanted to do exterior storage. Um, would we be doing exactly the same thing here? Would we be saying, okay, you have to limit what you're doing. You can't go so high. I, I'm sort of, the, the way I'm sort of approaching it is we've got commercial on commercial. We don't have commercial on housing. So I don't see the problem with the storage whatsoever. But um, what are your thoughts on that, Ms. Trino? Yeah, so the so the zoning bylaw, the CH zone allows for it's called a, a, a lumber and building supply kind of a business. It's a permitted use so long as it's within the building. So if there's a Home Depot uh, type of, or a Rona type of a building that were to come on an adjacent lot, uh, they have a lot of stuff inside the building, that would be fine. It wouldn't come to council, they could get building permits. But the second they wanted to store anything outside, then it's a conditional use. So the zone doesn't allow for any outdoor storage. That's why it comes to council uh, so that you can evaluate if there's any uh, any visual or, or other types of impacts that need to be addressed. Does that answer it? Yeah, I think this would be more akin to something like Spring Hill Lumber where a lot of the lumber is outside. I shouldn't maybe use names, but I, I know the uh, there's other lumber yards where most of the lumber is outside rather than inside. Uh, this seems to be a, a marriage of the two. There's some outside and there's some inside. So we're just allowing for a little bit of overflow, it looks like to me. And maybe what I should clarify for council is that if, uh, uh, just because you asked about another type of a, of a business, uh, if everything were stored in, inside, that's absolutely fine. Um, things are often delivered and take some time to transfer from the trucks or put on site and then dragged inside. They might take a few hours or overnight. We would not consider that an outdoor storage area. Um, that, that's just 
taking stuff from the trucks inside. Obviously, it takes a little bit of time. So that's not considered outdoor storage. This, because they want to actually have what I'm assuming is probably pallets with things on top of them there overnight, all that kind of stuff. That's an outdoor storage type of use. So okay, just great. for clarification. That's, that's good clarification too, so that they don't feel that they, you know, are violating with, because they're unloading a truck. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Just one question um, from me on a follow-up on the uh, new zone possible overlay for this area of retail to ensure that it's retail coming in here that kind of comes on top of the uh, commercial zone that it's already got now. Uh, if that happens and is approved and we've approved this exterior, um, would it not also be legally non-conforming to anything new that's added if we approve this now so that we wouldn't, with it being a retail zone, if that didn't include exterior storage or th th this applicant wouldn't have to come back again based on our new zoning bylaw changes that we're wanting to bring forward to make sure that this is a retail area. He would, he would be approved and fine. That, that's correct. So if council were to approve this uh, tonight, so long as the applicant acted upon the conditional use, uh, got their permits, that kind of thing, then it'd be considered a, a legal non-conforming should the property ever be rezoned. Um, and illegal conforming use is allowed to stay on the property, uh, but once they go to expand illegal conforming use, that has to come back for council consideration. Likewise, just for council's clarification, if somebody stops do, using a legal non-conforming use for 12 consecutive months or a year, um, then the legal non-conformity is, uh, is no longer in place. We got you on, on mute, Madam Mayor. Just to clarify then, this is a long-term business that's been a municipality for a long time and they have put new fencing all around there. Um, and what they're requesting, they, there is this long strip, has to be just specifically to that area of storage in the fenced area, in the area identified here uh, on the map tonight so that it can't be suddenly storage on a different portion of this land. It's specifically beside the building as they've shown council here tonight. Correct. And that's that first condition that we suggest that is uh, it'd be limited to what was proposed and any changes have to come back to council. So what's been proposed on their site plan, and I apologize for having it flipped around, but the storage would be within that fenced area that they've identified. So if they want to do it in a different spot, they got to come back to council. And you had suggested the possibility then of adding the condition that um, that it that any storage not exceed the height, height of the fencing based on comments made by Councillor Brissetti, that that could be added as a condition. I know we have uh, a couple of other properties where uh, residents have raised concerns that there's fencing, which is supposed to hide the exterior storage, and then sometimes it exceeds the height of that fencing, and Council and the RM get complaints on that. So uh, if there's agreement by others, I'd like to see that added as a condition as per Councillor Brissetti's suggestion. We don't want to see stuff coming over a fence. I think that's the intent of our bylaw, to contain it within the fenced area. Absolutely. Uh, council is well within their rights to add conditions to address any uh, any concerns uh, or potential negative impacts from the proposal. Uh, so putting that type of uh, a measure in place is, is completely okay. Likewise, if you want to put parameters of what the fence should be, whether it be opaque or wood or, or what have you, or even limit um, uh, the applicant's proposal of what they've proposed tonight, you're more than uh, within your rights to do that. Thank you. And I'll turn it to Miss Elias. Miss Elias, have we got the applicant with us this evening? Yes, Madam Mayor, we have Jeff Johnner with us this evening. Welcome, Mr. Johnner. Can you hear us okay? Uh, yes, I can. Thank you for joining us this evening. I'm going to turn it over to you, and if you have any uh, additional comments or, or things to add based on what you've heard here tonight, we appreciate you uh, being with us, and I will turn it over to you. Actually, I have nothing to add, just uh, the, the questions that uh, Council had for me. I'd like to address those as we go through Council. Great, thank you. Councillor Link, any questions for Mr. Johnner? Yeah, actually, to reiterate Councillor Brissetti's um, question, 
that the property um, to the west of lot six has fencing around it and a building on it. Um, Correct. And that looks like it's for outdoor storage as well. It, we have not decided what we're gonna do with that property yet. Uh, if we keep it, it, I would be applying for a variance for that one too. Okay, so you own the entire strip, but it's only lot six that you want that outdoor storage on for sure right now tonight. Yeah, I was worried about that after we subdivide everything because it would technically be on Windsor Way. Right, okay, thank you, Mr. Jones. Councillor Link. Councillor Clyburn, any questions for Mr. Johnner? Mr. Johnner, what happened um, with your conditional use previously? I actually had uh, in the area that we're trying to get for storage, I had about eight to 10 lifts there and was uh, I got a notice from Red River and that I had a week to move them and I moved them all within two days and called them back. And from what I understood, everything was okay. I understand a letter was sent to me. I didn't see it. So I guess for 13 years, I didn't have outdoor storage. Okay. So um, you had a, a conditional use for outdoor storage and you went over that or you put My it outdoor storage was, is technically where Windsor Way is now. Okay. And then I went over that and then got the warning, moved everything. Uh, the, I can't remember who I talked to. They said, okay, everything's good. And I found out about it when I called Pam to see what we could do for storage. Okay. As a so, bit of a surprise. So you're now going to, to store uh, behind the building currently right. where you are. I'm trying to keep everything contained for Windsor Plywood on yeah. that one lot. Okay. And do you have a lot of outdoor um, um, inventory? Uh, spruce lumber, treated lumber, composite decking. Yeah, okay. Um, so you're going to utilize that whole area pretty pretty fully? Yes. Okay. All right. And uh, just to precurse what's going to happen here, um, do you anticipate going over the fence? I, well, I... The racking up, looking at that? wood, but but I, I guess I will follow the rules. I will do what I have to do to follow the rules. Okay, I'm sure you will. Thank you very much for answering my questions. All right, thank you. Councillor Brissetti, any questions for the applicant? First of all, thanks, Mr. Donner, for uh, putting the fence up. It looks really good in the area. Um, and thanks for clarifying. It wasn't sure on the main picture shows your property right from Main Street to the tracks. Makes it a little bit difficult just for people not knowing how the subdivision happened in there. Yeah, because um, can, oh, sorry. I, I have just the problem with going over the fence. Just, I'm not gonna bring up different names, but looking at different lumber stores in a retail area, in a residential retail area, it, it's, you know, you got bags hanging off, you got the wrapping hanging off, mm -hmm. it starts to look rough. So that's the only reason I'd be bringing something like that up. Otherwise, yeah, it, it's cleaned up. I, I like the way the fencing and everything looks and way, the way the new streets are looking going in. And you've answered everything else. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And Councillor Prague, any questions for the applicant? Thank you, Mr. Joyner. And now, uh... Mr. Johnner has answered all my questions, and I have no doubt in my mind that Mr. Johnner will abide by the rules. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Prague. No questions from me. Uh, I echo uh, the comments made from other members of council. Your fence looks fantastic. You've done a great job. And, uh, and I'm happy to see existing uh, businesses stay in West St. Paul as, as the development in the area for commercial and retail expands. So. Uh, you're fitting in with that, and we do appreciate that fence uh, hiding stuff that's there. That's great. Thank you. I just forgot to call the vote.
All right, so just before we uh, hear from those uh, registered in support opposition or for information, uh, Michelle has provided additional information that I uh, called for the question but did not get a mover, seconder, or vote to open the public hearing. So before we hear representation, thank you, Michelle. Can't get it right every time. Uh, I'm going to ask for a mover and a seconder so that we open up that portion of the public. Everybody, thank you. Councillor Kleiber moved and Councillor Busetti <laughs> second. All those in favor? Opposed, and that is carried. I apologize, Council, and I apologize, Ms. Shaw. Thank you for getting me on track here. And I will uh, turn to uh, Ms. Elias. Do we have anyone registered to speak in uh, support, opposition, or for information? Uh, yes, Madam Mayor, we did receive one letter from Norma Alberg uh, registered in support. Um, just, to, just to generalize uh, the letter she submitted, um, it was sent to Council this afternoon. She generally notes that Windsor Plywood has been serving West St. Paul and surrounding areas uh, for 20 years and that a lumber retailer will be good for all of the new homes coming to West St. Paul uh, when new homeowners are ready to build new decks and fences. No one else was registered in support, in opposition, or for information. Thank you, Ms. Elias. I will turn it back to you, Mr. Johnner, if there was anything else that you're wanting to add for Council. No, I'm good. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll ask Council any further questions. Go ahead, Councillor Link. You're still on mute, Councillor Link. I apologize. Condition number six um, has the easement agreement uh, uh, been entered into for the turning circle, uh, at least 35 meters in diameter at the terminus of the three proposed north-south public roads. Um, has, has, has that condition been fulfilled? Just curious. Ms. Elias, maybe I can direct that question to you. Sure, Madam Mayor. I believe uh, uh, Councillor Link is referring to uh, the, a subdivision that also involves this property. Um, for that easement, from what I recall, it has been entered into. Thank you, Mr. Lyon. Any other questions from Council? Seeing none then, I will thank you, Mr. Johnner, for being available and speaking with Council tonight. Thank you. I will close the public hearing and then uh, Council will decide on this application. Thank you so much. Be it resolved that council do hereby close the public hearing and resume the regular meeting of council and I'll get a mover this time moved by Councillor Cliver and a seconder Councillor Busetti. I will call for the question all those in favor. Opposed and we have closed the public hearing that is carried and I will read the resolution. Before reading the resolution, I guess I'm going to ask council if it's uh, the will of council to add a condition about fencing. Seeing not from Councillor Link, not from Councillor Prague, not from Councillor Bersetti. Okay, so if we could add a fifth condition, uh, Mr. Eno, and when I get to that condition, I'll just have you read it in terms of, go ahead, <laughs> Mr. Eno, go ahead. Absolutely, Mayor. Uh, I, I can come up with a condition on the spot there. I, I just want to, for Council's clarification, just because I was confused with the orientation of the property. Uh, condition number four states that the storage of building materials should be prohibited from the front yard. So that's the front setback of uh, which I believe is 40 feet in this area. Just to go back to that, I'm just gonna share the screen just to go back to the um, the layout. That would be like this area in here. So I guess my question to council is, do they want to allow for storage in this area or or not? Just something for council to, uh, to talk about a bit, I guess. Thank you, Mr. Eno. Go ahead, Councillor Bassetti. I'm good with the layout the way the way it shows there that main street there is storage on the main street side it's actually whatever the new street so that's not coming to my head the name because they the way they turn over to windsor way because they used to come off a service road from main street so the the way they have it is i under now i get it and it's it, just because it's concerned and i'm good with the storage that way thank you transfer city councillor link um are you acceptable with the storage the way that it is shown in that diagram that's the side that the main street faces, right? Uh, 
I thought we were trying to avoid, mind you, he'll have a fence, correct? Yes, no problem then. Thank you, Councillor Kleiber. I'm okay with it. Councillor Craig. I'm okay with it too. I'm okay with it also, as long as uh, it, the requirement is that it is not to exceed the height of that fence because that is Main Street and we don't want people driving down highway number nine and seeing building materials sticking up above a fence. And I'm also okay with it if that fence remains solid. So going forward in the future, if something happens and there's some wear and tear on that fence, that it must remain solid there. I don't want, I would not want to see chain link while you're storing stuff up against number nine highway main street. So he's done an amazing fence there. And if something happened or he wasn't the owner anymore, the fence broke down. I wouldn't want to see uh, an, an opaque or chain link fence there. And I, I don't believe he would either. Um, so I'm good with it as long as it's that solid fence. So perhaps Madam Mayor, if I may, we would take that condition out and replace it with, with the following language. So condition number four would now state uh, that outdoor storage of materials not exceed the height of the fence and that the fencing remains as a solid fence. Does that sound right? Okay. It's good for me. I'm seeing nods. We're okay with that. Yep. Good. I'll read the resolution and Mr. Planner, when I get to number four, if I can have you read four and five or four now that combines uh, both the height and the solid, that would be great. And where, uh, sorry. Whereas the applicant has applied for conditional use 522 to permit exterior storage at 3176 Main Street in a CH commercial highway zone. And whereas under the provisions of the Planning Act, a public hearing has been held to hear representations for and or against the conditional use application. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Rural Municipality of West St. Paul approves conditional use 522 under the following conditions. One, that the conditional use approval be limited to what is proposed within this application. Any changes in use will require a new conditional use approval. Two, applicant owner to obtain all required permits, including but not limited to those from Red River Planning District, the Arm of West St. Paul and Manitoba Infrastructure, if required. Three, applicant owner provides ability for the RM of West St. Paul Fire Department to access the property should public access be restricted after typical business hours. Four, that outdoor storage, oops, sorry. Oh, no, I'm unmuted, <laughs> sorry. That outdoor storage of materials not exceed the height of the fence and that the fencing remain as a solid fence. The approval of a conditional use will expire and cease to have any effect if it is not acted upon within 12 months of the date of decision. A board, council, or planning commission may extend the deadline under subsection 1101 for an additional period no longer than 12 months if an application is received before the an initial deadline and for a second period of no more than 12 months if an application is received before the expiry of the first extension. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Bersetti, seconded Councillor Link. Any further discussion on this application? Hearing and seeing none, I will call for the vote. All those in favor? Opposed? And that is carried. Thank you. All right, we are down to 5.21, public hearing for conditional use. Sorry, no, we'll go down here, 5.3. Need the resolution to open the public hearing. Be it resolved this meeting of council recess for the purpose of holding a public hearing pursuant to section 74.1 of the Planning Act. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Bersetti, seconded Councillor Link. Any discussion? Hearing and seeing none, I will call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed, and that is carried. Thank you. Mr. Planner, I will turn that over to you. Thank you, Mayor. So this is zoning bylaw amendment number 2022-4P. Uh, it's to rezone the property at uh, 4008 Main Street from a rural residential zone to a, a commercial highway zone uh, in order to facilitate a multi-tenant commercial development. So here's the uh, subject property uh, located along Main Street, just south of an existing uh, uh, commercial slash industrial type of uh, use. 
the subject property um, is uh, is on the east or sorry yes the east side of the railway tracks between railway and the uh, and Main Street there. And here's just some drawings that the applicant uh, provided to show you the uh, the site as well as a bit of, a, of a, an air photo taken from an airplane it looks like to show you the existing property which does have a, a house on it right now as well as a conceptual site plan provided by the applicant where they're proposing uh, a various different uses for, uh, for the property if it were to be successfully rezoned. So as you know, when we look at rezoning applications, we review the, uh, the development plan and the secondary plans to see if it's in conformance with, the, uh, with those documents. Uh, in terms of the, uh, of the development plan, it is uh, designated as a settlement center where you would find a mix of different types of urban uses, commercial uh, being uses that are allowed in this area. But uh, more significantly in the secondary plan, uh, this area is listed as a mixed use neighborhood uh, designation. Uh, and in that designation, it notes that commercial uses are allowed, but it's to include small scale retail and professional services. Um, so the CH zone as it's listed right now is uh, provides for a lot more than just uh, small scale uh, retail and professional services. Based on that alone, uh, the CH zone doesn't really uh, fit within the, uh, with the secondary plan. Uh, I know as Councillor Lincoln noted we're, uh, earlier that we're going to be having a, a different zoning bylaw come up later tonight that has a proposed new mixed use zone that might fit a little bit more in this area. Uh, that being said, there is a way that uh, we see that the property could be approved for rezoning. So as I noted, the, uh, the highway commercial zone has some more intensive uses than, uh, than small scale commercial uses. But through the rezoning approval process, council can require a development agreement that can deal with things that you normally deal with, like infrastructure or design guidelines, that sort of thing. But you can almost also limit use. So if you if there are uses within the CH zone that you don't want to see on this property that you feel don't fit with the mixed use designation, the development agreement can specifically for lack of a better term, strike out those types of uses. Uh, so things like what we just dealt with, a lumber yard, if you don't think that's appropriate in a mixed use type of an area, then you can, in the development agreement, say you're not allowed to do that use here. So that's a way that we see that this could be approved. Um, this has been circulated to the government agencies and there are no significant uh, uh, concerns. There's a couple of, um, uh, of requirements from highways for permits and uh, conservation dealing with uh, with drainage, the municipality as well has uh, has noted some uh, some conditions as well, including entering into a development agreement. Uh, and based on that, we're recommending that the application could be approved once again under the condition that uh, council requires a development agreement to limit the uses so that it fits within that mixed use uh, designation in the secondary plan. That's all I have, Madam Mayor. If Council has any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you, Mr. Eno. I will go around our virtual council table here and see if there are questions for you. Councillor Bissetti, I will begin with you this time. Any questions for Mr. Eno? Yes, Mr. Eno. So are you saying that ways for us to, I'm just looking at the list here that he has listed on some of the proposed property uses. Things like mini warehouse, self storage, general storage, greenhouse plant tree. For us to, I guess, stop that kind of stuff from happening since we've almost, well, I guess we've turned down a self storage on the same zoning. How do we eliminate that stuff from being, you know, assume that it's going to be allowed on that kind of property? So, as I, as you can I just noted, clarify that. Uh, of course. So as I noted, you could require a development agreement be entered into as part of an approval and that you limit the uses. So those types of uses, you could just say, are not allowed on this property. We can essentially go through the, the list in the zoning bylaw. And perhaps I'll just share my screen with the... Sorry, bear with me. I'm just going to bring up the zoning here.
Here we go. Can you see that screen? So here's the, the use table for all the different um, uses that are permitted and conditional within the CH zone. So if there are things like uh, selling implements, uh, farming implements, uh, uh, machinery that you think is not appropriate on this property, in a development agreement, you can just say that use is not allowed, or you can just simply pick out the uses from, uh, uh, from this use table that you only want to see. So things like retail sales or um, professional service establishments, like professional offices, those types of things. You can simply state in your development agreement uh, or limit what can be on this property. And of course, the development agreement is registered on title, so that runs with the land. So whether it's this owner or anyone else in the future, they would be uh, they'd be tied to that. Um, one more question now. Um, look, reading some of the lingo that they're using in here, for a, are they calling that uh, that there's already roads in this subdivision, so there, this wouldn't have to come back? to us because they're saying there's a shared road yeah so so there is no subdivision approval on this property i'm guessing what they're proposing is to do a, a, a subdivision type of uh scenario um because they want to have a have a road there uh, they show proposed lots so even if this were to be like a condo type of subdivision where they're splitting off the off the lots and want to and want a uh, like a condo type of road that would still have to come back to council the only scenario I can see is that if uh, it were just to be a pure uh, commercial multi-tenant site and they have their own private driveway, private internal road access, that would not come back to council. So the opportunity to, uh, I guess, uh, put any uh, restrictions or any requirements in terms of design guidelines, like what's outlined in the uh, secondary plan, is, is now. Okay, thank you. I'm just good with the DA. Thanks. Thank you. Councillor Link, any questions for Mr. Eno? Um, comments. Um, as, as all the other councillors uh, together uh, and with the community, we recently uh, looked uh, and got a refreshed idea about the plans for uh intersection improvements on main street and widening in main street and the reason for all those improvements that mi plans is for safety uh the entrance to 4008 uh, will be shared with a business the entrance is located on a curve and i drove past it a few days ago while the weather was still good back and forth, definitely that entrance is uh, right on a curve. And there are, I suppose, that MA has decided that there's visibility uh, issues with that entrance. Um, and they're saying that there are long-term plans for intersection improvements uh, in conjunction with future improvements along Highway 9 and the possibility of a service road into, uh, into the area. Uh, when the service road is built or improvements, is there something funny about this? Um, uh, improvements undertake the direct property access onto uh, Highway 9 will be improved and relocated and a new service road will be put in. So um, there's also residential areas we know uh, they've all been approved on the on the east side of maine uh north shortly north i guess it's this is amusing shortly north of um this location and there's going to be a lot more traffic traveling back and forth into the city off maine past a corner that's already considered iffy. The business proposal um, would be used and appreciated by the community, I'm sure. Uh, it is going to attract more traffic in and out of that 
approach. So uh, as much as I, I think it would be beneficial for our RM, at this time, I think the safety concerns all outweigh the benefits, the economic benefits. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Link. Councillor Prague, any questions for Mr. Eno? Um, I concur with what Councillor Link is saying. There's a, a turn there, and there's been a lot of accidents there, turn coming off that turn. And there's housing on the east side that she indicated. And with this traffic coming out of there, and there's no intersection just coming onto traffic, I don't think is a wise idea. That's all, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kleiber. Any questions for Mr. Eno? Um, I guess I just have a comment and it's uh, similar to Councillor Buschetti, which is um, the pro proposed property uses that they've described uh, concern me. So I had thought this area would be more of a retail area like uh, there was the talk of shops of West St. Paul at one point and so on and so forth. But um, when you talk about a mini warehouse and self storage, I'm not thrilled about that, especially in that in a residential area. Uh, non accessory parking, is that a park and go kind of thing? Or what is that? You could view it as that, yeah, yeah. Uh, parking stalls for rent. Like okay, yeah, so it's a uh, park. People from Selkirk can park and go downtown kind of thing. Um, and then um, the general storage, which is one that you just turned down, and a greenhouse plant and tree nursery. Those are ones that actually concern me as the ones that they're proposing. So um, I think that if, if this is going to go through, we have to be very specific as to what exactly it is that we do want to see here. Um, and I think you're right, um, Mr. Eno, to, to go through that chart and say, well, here's what we don't want. Now, I know that limits a business person. Uh, being a business person, we don't like being too limited. <laughs> we, want to, we want to do what we want to do to make some money. But I think that money could still be made here, um, but with some restricted use so that it's in keeping with that surrounding area. That's just kind of my thought. And I think that your suggestion is a good one. Um, I'd like your thoughts on the, um, no, I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Okay. Madam Mayor, if I may. Um, so yes, absolutely, Councillor Kleber. Uh, you, can, uh, you can restrict the uses uh, that are on that property, uh, I guess further to uh, the other councils uh, uh, noting some, some concerns with, uh, with safety on that, on that area. Uh, you can also uh, address access and that sort of thing. Um, I, I just want to pull up on my screen uh, the secondary plan map for this area. So this area shows that there is supposed to be the, the dashed blue line is a, is a future collector road. Whether that'll happen or not happen, I'm not sure, um, as well as greenways and those sorts of things. All that, once again, can be addressed through a development agreement. Um, uh, it's well within your purview to uh, to address those those types of things, uh, and I do appreciate the comment of, uh, of, of business people who want to have uh, less restrictions. Uh, uh, my, my wife is in that, so I absolutely appreciate that. Um, but the uh, the restrictions were already put in place, so to speak, through your secondary plan, which outlines once again that uh, uh, small scale retail, commercial, professional services; those are what the area envisions. Thank you. Thank you. No questions for me at this time. Ms. Elias, do we have the applicants uh, available online? Yes, Madam Mayor, we have Dennis Anthony with us this evening. Yes. Can you, hear us okay? 
Yes, I just unmuted myself. So you've been able to hear the conversation of what's taking place from council and uh, and the planner's presentation of his report. If there's any other information that you'd like to add for council to help us make this, this decision, that would be great. Yeah, one thing I'd like to speak to, uh, <clears throat> highways didn't come back with uh, any of the concerns on the safety, but we're certainly willing to uh, work with Red River and council. One thing I do wanna say, we have no intent of using a parking, like a park and ride or whatever the term is, we have no intention. The parking was played with a couple of times in uh, it, with one of Mr. Uh, Eno's uh, associates. So th this here is our first attempt at trying to make a plan and we have, um, I've engaged a uh, planner, Vic D, I think Vic is on. So we're very open to working within uh, uh, council. Like this, this thing with the mini storage and stuff is perhaps uh, a little bit of a lack of our ignorance on what can go in there. Like we're certainly open to uh, like some of the condo stuff like we see on capitalists. But this is our first attempt at doing something like this. So perhaps we're at a point that we should, uh, I don't know how you put this on pause and we come back uh, at a little bit, little later date with a, uh, with a more specific plan, uh, you know, in that, in that respect. Uh, but the, the access road, uh, Vic, can you maybe speak to that uh, as part of our thoughts here? Can we can we unmute Vic, or can you see him on your uh, screen? We can't see him, but I believe he's unmuted. Vic, can you hear us? Okay. I can hear you now. Okay. And as long as you can hear me, that's good. Um, I, I think the the intent is uh, is really to try and fit in. I think with the area, that's that certainly is paramount and. And we've certainly had a real concern about the access road and what is drawn there. If you see in our plan that uh, Mr. Uh, Eno showed, uh, there's an existing loop and that's actually an existing road loop uh, to the house. <clears throat> so at present, we don't like the entrance either. At the same time, you know, we look forward, I think, to a frontage road or uh, a back road or something like that you know, to make things a lot safer. There's, there's no question, but it's, um, and, and the way we've got our sketch drawn right now, we believe that's actually the safest of all the possibilities because it is as far away from the curve as you possibly can be because the curve starts right after that, uh, that entrance. And in terms of uh, subdividing, I think at this point, uh, I think, uh, you know, once we sort of get an idea of, I think, what kind of uses that, um, you know, that uh, you're willing to sort of uh, uh, allow, I think, you know, we can certainly work with a lot of uh, framework. And in terms of greenhouse, um, I'd like to sort of sort of mention the fact that, uh, you know, we're dealing with some fairly, fairly high tech, uh, really sort of green initiatives, you know, with uh, some of our greenhouse work right now. And we're not looking at any cannabis <laughs> operation or anything like that. It's going to be more like high tech tomatoes uh, or things that grow um, in uh, hydroponics, I think is, is kind of how we're thinking. Um, and again, there's uh, a lot of different opportunities, you know, for um, food security is uh, when we start thinking about that. So, you know, we're trying to think very, very positively, you know, the, uh, uh, the main business is really sort of environmentally sensitive. And, uh, you know, we are very, very concerned about the environment. And it's not just the environment of the, the natural environment, but also the urban environment. And there's a real sensitivity that, uh, you know, we'd like to sort of, you know, put into this, uh, into this site. I'm uh, not sure what else I can sort of, you know, sort of say at this point. So, uh... Can I get a chance to talk again? Yes, go ahead. Okay, so perhaps where we're at is, uh, is I hate to use the old acronym going back to the drawing board, 
but perhaps we're not quite ready for, uh, uh, you know, meeting in the, the specific uses. We need to be a little bit more specific. Uh, the road itself is just put there as a shared road because if you, you have to have frontage off of something. The road would be built to municipal standards so we could get a little bit more specific with that. And like I said, this is our first crack with what we have here for uh, a site. The only problem, and I mean, I just addressed one of the councillors had brought up the, uh, like we would actually have appreciated if that service road would have been in here, but we've been here since 204 and we've had some meetings on drainage and uh, the service road with uh, highways some time ago. And I mean, you know, it, it's nice to see West St. Paul is being very proactive and it's growing and we want to grow with it. But it's been a long time in coming. And unfortunately, that approach is what we have to work with at this point. And I mean, we'd like to work to like, maybe we can clear all those trees out. Maybe there's some things we can do uh, along with the new use that, you know, would maybe get council to buy in with something that's positive. And, uh, you know, we've been here for a long time and we want to be here for a lot longer. So I think perhaps we need to... Uh, take a step back and uh, do a little more work and then come forward again. Or I think the, you know, the Mr. Eno sort of talking about, I think our, uh, I think things can be easily resolved through the development agreement in terms of, you know, what actually goes there. And uh, I think the CH actually sort of zoning makes a lot of sense as opposed to sort of maintaining a single family dwelling there. Uh, and in terms of, I think the uh, councillor links, you know, concerns and and all of our concerns uh, about access. Um, you know, the the what is shown in our plan right now is the existing access the way it is to the site, and there's no question, you know, that we would like a better solution uh, than that. Uh, and just to give you an idea, we actually looked at uh, possibly sort of putting it at the south end of the site. That's even more dangerous. Anyway, we're happy to, uh, you know, to, I think, address, I think, access uh, as, uh, you know, as I guess others, you know, sort of give us our, our guidance and see how it fits in with the municipality's uh, plans. Well, perhaps we refine our uh, intended use on the uh, lots, because like I said, one thing for sure, I just want to make the statement that no park and ride or rental of, uh, parking space is not part of any of our plans. The reason it's laid out that way was our best attempt to service the building and parking for the building because there's got to be a certain amount of parking for uh, prospective tenants or future subdivision. Thank you both for, for presenting and I'll go around our virtual council table here and, and council members probably have questions for you both. Uh, to ask and uh, and then you'll have an opportunity to speak again. We'll see if there's anyone registered in support or opposition and then you'll both have an opportunity to speak again. But I'll go around our council table here and I, I know there'll be some questions for you. Councillor Kleiber, you have your hand up, go ahead. Uh, so I'm hearing a couple of different things um, and I don't have your last name, so I'll say Mr. Vic. Uh, <laughs> you mentioned um, hydroponics and you mentioned uh, a nurse, uh, some sort of a nursery. Is that something that you are wanting to pursue or you have a client that wants to pursue that? And would that be indoor, an indoor thing that you, or an outdoor thing that you would build? What, what would that look like? There's a lot of different avenues that we um, are looking at in terms of, uh, uh, you know, potential greenhouses. And, and part of it is, we are very actively sort of looking at food security in Manitoba, uh, you know, with a, a variety of different initiatives, uh, including, um, you know, potential uh, uh, different clients and, and different types of, of produce. Um, Manitoba has been targeted uh, by, you know, one of our investors uh, to try and really, really help, I think, with the food security issue. And, uh, you know, this is part of the, 
research that we're doing. Um, you know, we were looking at an investor possibly sort of doing a demonstration site you know, so we can sort of look at how we can actually, um, I think, increase our own food security by being able to produce, uh, you know, I think, you know, good food products here. And, you know, the, the advancements in some of the technology in terms of things like LED lighting and just uh, some incorporating some of the technologies, uh, you know, for uh, lower energy uh, uses and things um, have really made, I think, uh, a number of people sort of looking at Manitoba as a, as a potential. And it's, uh, it's part of the, uh, it's part of the business development, I think that the, the company has been doing for years now. Well, it, well it's, it's, uh, it's, sorry, go ahead, Dennis. Okay, and specifically to entertain, that would be one of the lots that we would do, I guess if you wanna call it in-house, just a little background, we're building currently a 10 acre greenhouse up in Dauphin, Manitoba with Vermillion Growers. So uh, this maybe could be packaged in such a way that we could fit the retail uh, use through a development agreement. But I guess what I want to say is it's it's not just a dream, like we're actually building a 10 acre greenhouse and these smaller uh, uh, food sources, as we all can see, uh, like over this last storm, you know, you see your uh, market strip, uh, you can see what's happening over in Europe. So this group we're working with, um, small indoor uh, growth where you can get fresh produce year round. Like I'll be very proud if next February I can bring a basket of tomatoes by the council from our greenhouse up in uh, Dauphin. Like we've been to Europe four times. We've got a couple of crews coming over in June, July. and you know, that's a five or six year dream that's finally come to fruition. So through the development agreement, if that is possible to work closely with Red River Planning and yourselves, we'll certainly look at that kind of thing. The outdoors, uh, sorry, the storage and the mini lockers perhaps um, is something at our first stab. Again, like, like we're not opposed to having, like there are some nice condo units over on Capitalist with mixed use. Uh, we're certainly, uh, willing to work on some of that and and some of those strip buildings where well i call them truck condos but that's kind of the idea there as well with the presenting so maybe we're not just quite specific enough uh, in meeting that you know well i think the other the other thing is we're trying to make sure that we are consistent you know with what the municipality wants to do and again we, we haven't sort of spent a lot of time you know, with the plans or have been involved, I think, with the planning that's been involved. Um, but if I can sort of follow up on the greenhouse, the, the one of our key investors has really talked about trying to set up a showroom so we can set a showcase, I think, some of these really fantastic technologies and approaches, uh, you know, that we're, we're looking at. And uh, okay. there's, some, there's some things like that. And, and, you know, this site isn't big enough for us to do a, um, a full plant like we're doing in Dauphin, uh, but it's certainly, you know, a, a perfect spot for doing a showcase, you know, close to the city where we can say, you know, here's the current technology. Now, uh, to give you an example, if you can imagine, uh, I think, you know, most people here, have, you know, had gardens or something like that, but the type of uh, productivity of some of this high intensive farming, uh, you can get something like 90 kilos of tomatoes out of a square meter. Of area. So let me ask you a question. What percentage of this property would be devoted to that? Again, you know, we're, you know, I think we're, the first thing that we're looking for is changing the use for residential so it can actually go to a CH. And I think, you know, there, we have every intention of trying to be consistent, uh, you know, with whatever the municipality wants to do with this area, because there's no point in putting something that doesn't fit. <laughs> and we have a lot okay. of different opportunities and angles and approaches, you know, for things that we do uh, to make this fit. And certainly we have another branch of, you know, what we do uh, that you can imagine that's uh, really into uh, uh, professional services. Um, again, uh, I'm actually not a planner. Uh, more specifically, I'm a landscape architect. And, okay. Um, so my, and my background is, you know, very strong in 
uh, planning, design, and construction. Uh, but certainly, you know, with the planning that I have done, it's always really, really important for us to be sort of in keeping, you know, with, I think, the, the intent uh, of the overall plan, because we're only a small cog in this. And, uh, you know, the more that we can support that, I think that it becomes a win-win, you know, for what we are trying to accomplish, as well as the municipality. So and I think I like the, development, the development agreement, I think, is a real key sort of instrument, you know, for us to ensure, you know, that we are in keeping with, you know, what the municipality is trying to do. So, Dennis, I, I would ask you the question, uh, you mentioned this earlier, would you want us to table this in order for you to have um, an opportunity to maybe go and refine your application? Is that something that you're wanting to do at this time, or are you wanting to continue on with this application for council the way that it is? Um, I guess um, I would probably... And are we able to take a five minute uh, break where I can have a short sidebar with Vic? Uh, the other thing is if we did table it, how long, uh, you know, after we were to put, uh, and I mean, I know everything is uh, tentative, but how long would it take for us to come back in front of you with the process if we did decide to redefine uh, this a bit? Like in terms of how, how far backed up are you these days? So let me go to the planner on this because my understanding is we couldn't table it. We'd have to adjourn. Otherwise, you know, if we, if we move forward in a, in a different direction, this whole thing, you end up having to reapply, re-advertise. So I'm going to turn it over to the planning expert here, Mr. Eno, uh, to, to share some options with council here at this point. For sure. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, so there's a few things that council needs to keep in mind uh, with, the, uh, with the advent of Bill 37. You're now under timeline constraints as to when you need to conclude a public hearing. So you have to conclude a public hearing within 90 days after the application has been made. The application was made on February the 9th. So that means by June the 9th, you have to have this public hearing concluded, or it can be deemed as it's just rejected, um, in which case all of that, not dealing with it and rejection can be appealed to the municipal board. Um, but I, I think on a bigger issue, uh, Madam Mayor and to council, I understand uh, that maybe the applicant hasn't worked out the fine details of exactly what they want to have on the property or layouts of buildings, uh, maybe not all the different kind of tenants they want, or even how they might subdivide and access this, uh, this property. Uh, but this application is just for rezoning. It's just to establish what uses could be allowed on the property. So I'm not sure I see uh, an immediate benefit to tabling a rezoning application, when if their intent is to subdivide, that can come afterwards, after a zoning is already put in place. And like I noted uh, uh, previously, if there are concerns about uh, uh, different uses that should not be allowed on the property, you can require that be addressed through a development agreement. If there's infrastructure type of concerns, that can be addressed through a development agreement. Design guidelines, access, all those different things can be addressed now through a development agreement. And then the applicant would have all that information to take into account when they're actually planning the development of the site. So um, just, just some two cents there. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm not sure I see a benefit to tabling this so that they can work out the fine details. Because the question today is, are you okay with that zone and the uses being allowed on there? So. As a follow-up, Mr. Eno, uh, on to that, I, I know Bill 37 also has requirements in terms of how quickly a development agreement has to be done. So I, I don't know if you have that right in front of you. My concern is if the applicants don't know what they're doing and they're going to figure that out through a DA, our municipality has a strict timeline to put out and completed DA under Bill 37 now as well. I I, uh, I have the Planning Act uh, in the room here. I can look that up for you. I can't recall what exactly it says. I do know there's some timelines and, and, and different things involved, but I can look that up for you if you, if you like. Okay. Yes, please. Thank you. Councillor Link, go ahead. Thank you. And in the meantime, I would like to, to ask the applicant if they're aware of the three conditions that Manitoba Trans 
transportation and infrastructure uh, included in their letter of March the 3rd of this year. Uh, I think I sensed some frustration with uh, MI in the past. And I'm wondering if they're aware of the third suggestion for a condition, which was um, they had some concerns with the traffic that was going to be generated by the development, and never mind what's going to be generated down the road with the residential. Uh, and they um, they might this this development might have an impact on the traffic operations of PTH nine. So they're requiring the developer. Uh, to provide some preliminary traffic projections. And they want contact with their representative and they give contact information in the letter. And based on this information, our de department will determine if a more detailed traffic impact study is required. And if required, this study is to be prepared by a qualified engineer and will determine what impact the traffic generated by this development will have on the traffic operations. So it looks like you have to jump some hoops uh, with MTI as well. And I was wondering if you were aware of that. It looks like they're ready to do something, um, not in 20 years time, but in the foreseeable future. Yeah, we are certainly aware of the, some of the comments, uh, but again, I think we are trying to work with the municipality and this is where, you know, which of the possible uses are, um, is what's going to generate the, those numbers. And As to answer Councillor Link, we have engaged a uh, traffic uh, engineer but it hasn't been signed off. So we are aware of MH's uh, concern and we've had some discussion with them. So we're certainly aware of that and we would address that in a professional manner. Great, and, and then you could give the feedback, of course, to the RM, that would be great. So uh, I'm glad you're aware and I'm glad that MI uh, is aware as well. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bersetti, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Anthony. Um, question on the residential home that's on the property. What are you planning to do with that home so that it's not a residential onto a commercial piece of property if it gets changed over? Yeah, we would be looking at it as office space or demoing it. And that partly goes with the uh, development agreement. Like that house does not have to stay there. Uh, like to be uh, instrumental in our future development. It could probably be there short time as a uh, construction office, and then it would uh, either be renovated into a, a like a home-based business to fit the site or be demoed. We're not we're not uh, attached to that house. The only reason I'm asking is going south to north. It kind of makes that your entrance blind with, you know, the home being there, the trees around the home that kind of stuff and just to eliminate some of the concerns and I guess help with some of the concerns before highways goes on with any of their changes to more highlight your entrance, that kind of stuff. It's not, you know, all of a sudden bang, you're turning the corner, you're there. With clearing a little bit of the home and some of the trees are right around there, just to highlight that entrance. Yeah, there's no uh, reason why we wouldn't. And then we said earlier, we had considered removing the trees and uh, the house can be removed as part of that. I think that's kind of final discussion with highways. Like like I said, we want to make this happen and that house um, is not a uh, integral part of our plan. Well, what I was just getting at is if you're willing to work on something to make, you know, before highways gets into their long design of what they're planning yeah. to do on Main Street, yeah. just to highlight and help out on your area. And I guess working with the rest of your property around it to, to make it all fit in together. The answer is yes. We're willing We're willing to, uh, you know, clean up that front so we could get line of sight for lack of the technical term 
to improve the safety. Okay, that's it for now. Thanks. Council Craig, any questions for the applicants? Thank you, Dennis and Vic. For I found it your honesty that you didn't spend a lot of time on this application. And I admire you for that. And you want to work within the municipality. And it seems like environmentally, you're thinking ahead for the future for your greenhouses. And I took from your presentation that you're, you're on capitalists and you saw the buildings there, the mixed uses, and you're, you want to implement that onto this property. And as the planner said, the DE, all these things can be addressed on the DE. And I just want to thank you for your presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, a couple of questions, comments for me. Sort of. Thank you on our speaker here. Um, <laughs> In terms of the traffic uh, study, uh, of course, I'm concerned about safety there, but at the same time, uh, there's existing business there for access and, and a lot of time the plan from MI about side roads and things that they have planned for the future there probably won't happen until somebody like yourself develops more fully and really pushes it forward that there's a need. So I'm not necessarily wanting to hold businesses back because of, of future highway work. We've had... Uh, plans in the works for widening highway number nine for over 40 years now. So I'm not necessarily keen on holding you back from uh, moving forward on business and, and development there because of that. Um, but I like what you have made comments too about visibility, addressing trees and, and moving forward in that. I see the benefits of, of expanding there for you, uh, the jobs it creates, the ability to address issues. There's drainage issues there, uh, ways to make that look good. We have a, definitely a responsibility there. This is a key location on number nine highway. We have hundreds of homes that have been approved almost across the street from, from your location there. So for myself, and when you guys both speak about fitting in with the secondary plan and wanting this to be good, uh, I assure you council definitely does as well. Um, you're in a, in a prime location right on the uh, connector highway from Winnipeg to Selkirk, you're extremely visible. And, and making sure that we get this right uh, with all of the homes and the value that's added in that area. I, I definitely want to make sure that you guys get this right and that whatever commercial goes in there, if this is approved, uh, looks good, addresses lots of the issues in terms of drainage, fencing, buffering, trees, landscaping. Um, that my expectation, and I believe the expectation of residents who are, are spending seven hundred to nine hundred thousand dollars buying homes on River Springs Drive now in new development, uh, and River Springs Grove are going to want to be near uh, top-notch, high-quality uh, commercial development. Uh, so that you know uh, where I'm coming from, I obviously can't speak for the rest of council on the concerns there. One of the things that's concerning me is just the uncertainty that you guys have on this. And I know uh, our planner has, has made it clear, you know, this is, it is a commercial zone and, and council can really uh, determine through a DA with the planner, with the CAO and legal and yourselves as the applicants of what ends up going here. Um, but that process is, is removed a bit from residents. And so we have this public hearing and residents know that you guys are wanting to uh, zone this commercial but a lot of what we've been doing lately in West St. Paul is our developers, uh, specifically residential, multifamily, and even commercial, have been going to residents and saying, this is what we're thinking. Are there any concerns? How can we modify our plans? I'm a little bit concerned. Uh, I like what you guys are bringing forward and wanting to do commercial. And, and I can see you're really passionate about uh, wanting to fit in with what's existing there. I'm a little bit concerned about uh, how council knows and how you guys know what residents are, are thinking would be a good fit. And, and you know, that because there's nothing really in here about the greenhouses or what exactly you guys are wanting to do. And you're saying, you know, we'll do what you guys are wanting to do. I'd like you to do what, what the residents are, are 
supportive of in this area? Have you given any thought to holding an open house uh, and saying this is what we're wanting to do on site and we'd like feedback from the residents and coming to council saying what we heard from residents is they really like the greenhouse idea. They're quite passionate about that and, and the hundreds of homes that are being built across the street would really love to walk over and make use of this greenhouse uh, and so that council can move forward on something like that in a really um, transparent way and in a way that's had feedback from the community. So I guess I would ask uh, both of you gentlemen, is that something that you would consider? It's very hard not knowing what it is that you wanna do and, and making those determinations um, with administration behind the scenes as council. It really puts us in a difficult position. Well, I think we'd be open to that uh, in the sense that uh, when Vic said earlier, we would like to get it right once because it is a lot of money that we're going to be putting out, uh, you know, to make this work. So um, open house is something uh, we haven't uh, considered, but uh, we've done some general discussion in the area. So a little bit of the idea about, and that's where some of that storage in that came. Maybe, like I said, it doesn't fit the intended use, but there, there was some preliminary, but it's word of mouth and uh, visiting on an individual basis, not an organized open house. You know, and council has been removed from those open houses in terms of not planning them, but when they're on-site open houses, we've made our Sonova Center available uh, to developers at no cost to have that facility to do it. And it's removed from us and strictly developers or developers have done that by Zoom. And it's, it's provided council with some good reassurance of what residents are wanting to see. And, well, you know, we want our commercial developers and our residential to succeed and to, to be putting things in that are uh, embraced by the community. Um, so it's just a thought and, and a concern that I have of, yes, we rezone this, but we're all really very fuzzy and unclear about what's going forward here. And if we determine that through a DA behind the scenes, it's really removed from our residents and, and how do we know it's the best fit? So that's where I'm at and a little bit concerned about right now. I would say that the first level is, uh, uh, do we want this as a single family dwelling or residential as it is right now, or do we really want to go to a mixed use? And our, our, our general feeling you know, right off the bat is that a, a mixed use um, is probably the best thing for this piece of property uh, for all the same reasons. Now, to be more specific about what that should be. Again, we have a lot of different sort of, um, uh, I guess, ways, you know, that we can develop this property. And uh, this is only, you know, one of, and it's it's very dear to us because this is basically where home is. Um, and, you know, we're quite aware of a lot of the, the nuances, but again, it's one of those things where, you know, we're ultimately looking for a win-win solution here. And, uh, you know, that can't happen with us just saying, well, here, this is, this is, this is going to give a, a win for us. You know, I think it's going to be a collaborative thing, but I think the first step that is needed is, I, th I guess, for us is to say the general direction that we see for this property is going to a mixed use and a more commercial um, zoning. Thank you for that. Uh, Mr. Eno, were you able to find information in terms of how quickly a development agreement would have to be done? Yes, ma'am. So I have a few different uh, pieces of information for you. Uh, just firstly, um, I think I may have misspoke before. As you know, there's a timeline to conclude the public hearing. I think I might have said June 9th. I actually meant May the 9th is the, is the deadline. So in terms of development agreements, uh, it, what it essentially says is that the council and the property owner have to, sorry, I want to get the wording correct here. If they are unable to agree to the terms of conditions of a development agreement within 90 days, that can be appealed to the municipal board. Now, coming to agreement, I'm not exactly sure what that means. As you know, nobody has notes from the province on what these two changes actually mean. I don't know if that means that council has to pass a resolution or that there's someone in something informal, like a, a gentleman's handshake, so to speak. I, I don't know what it means. So, but 90 days is the mark I think you were looking for. I, just a couple other notes, Madam Mayor, just on what has been uh, uh, discussed, just so the applicant's fully aware. 
the CH zone does not allow for any kinds of agriculture types of uses. So the, the talk about having a greenhouse or something like that, that's not permitted within the CH zone. So they may need to rethink that well, uh, part of their uh, other business. Uh, again, it's more of a showroom as opposed to an actual operation. Okay. You know, we're starting we're starting a farm with our site in Dauphin, and phase one is ten acres. Okay, I don't even have ten acres here. <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to go to Miss Elias now and see if we have anyone registered to speak in support, opposition, or for information. Miss Elias. Uh, yes, Madam Mayor, we have Norma Alberg registered against the application. Uh, she submitted a letter that was submitted to council earlier this afternoon. She notes the timing of this rezoning and development of this property conflicts with the planned improvements slated for this section of highway. Specific fundamental principles of highway safety to be considered here include that of one, a transition area within a zone of changing speed limit, two, sight lines being on a curve in the road, and three, control access to highway traffic. Uh, she goes on to note that these significant safety issues can all be addressed by Manitoba Transportation and, and Infrastructure's proposed Highway 9 improvements in this specific zone that include uh, one, widening of the highway, two, addition of turning lanes as appropriate, three, addition of service roads leading to, and four, control traffic light intersections at, as planned for Masters Avenue. Also registered in opposition is Michael Alberg. No one registered for information. Thank you, Ms. Elias. Dennis and Vic, uh, it goes back to you if there's any further comments that you're wanting to make for council. Um, no, I don't think so. Unless Vic's got something, um, we're just wondering if we get maybe a two or three minute uh, pause like you had done before, because Vic and I maybe would like to have a quick conversation and maybe there is something we want to bring forward, but uh, it's been certainly a very informative process. But if you if you bear with us, we'd like to have a couple of minute conversation if that would work. I can absolutely do that. And I think council needs a bit of a break as well. Um, we'll give you both 15 minutes and council will have a break and be able to get a drink and, and Mr. Hino as well. We'll take a little bit of a break. So back in 15 minutes, if that's acceptable for everyone. Perfect. Thank yeah. you. All right. Very good. Thank you. Thank you.
get started again. I can hear you. Okay. Thanks, Vic. Vic Dennis, our meetings are uh, live streamed on uh, YouTube. And so I'm just making sure that uh, our little production here is live and a go before I get you guys talking again. Brian says live. We're live. Okay. Thank you. All right, to uh, Vic and Dennis, I will pass it back over to you if there's anything else that you are wanting to add. We've heard from those, uh, anybody wanting to speak in support of opposition or for information, and we will turn it back over to you and see if there's anything that you missed and are wanting to add. I think the only thing we'd really like to do is to just reiterate the first step that we see is, uh, I guess, the rezoning and getting this into a CH um, category. And I think in terms of development agreement, we look forward to working, you know, with you to, you know, get a really, really good, clear picture of what the municipality feels is important. And if it's a matter of us even working together, you know, with the community, you know, we're quite welcome, uh, you know, to, to sort of entertain anything like that. And again, as we said, this is, uh, this is our home has been our home for several years and we continue uh, uh we we plan on continuing to be here for a long time so you know we we want to get this right as well thank you both councillor said you have your hand up go ahead Vic, i'm just wanted to clarify are you sure it's a ch commercial you wanted like you, there was a lot of talk of greenhouses and as Mr. Eno pointed out, that's not allowed in that zoning. So just, it's I just want to make greenhouse. sure that we're going to get it right here. As you said, you want to do it once and do it right. So no, I was using that as an example of where this is the idea of a showcase, you know, where we could actually sort of show uh, you know, how the system sort of works. Uh, because right now, like the greenhouse that we're building right now is out in Gotham. We can't, it's a lot harder to get people to go out there as opposed to say, Here's this is what our system looks like. This is how the technology works. This is how, this is the the way our lights uh, system sort of works. This is how the water works, et cetera, et cetera. It's it's not so much a um, it's more of a storefront um, uh, to to demonstrate, I think, for others. Thank you. Any other questions from council? Thank you both. I guess my question to our planner then, or maybe to council is, is uh, I wanna be cautious in how we're proceeding here in terms of closing a public hearing, uh, adjourning or tabling, and that council, uh, we move forward in the way that council's wanting to move forward here on this. Um, so our options, and Mr. Reno, you can clarify for me, um, our options are we close the public hearing and we don't have to immediately make a decision as a council that can either be immediately made or we have 30 days to make a decision. Is that correct? Or our option is to adjourn this and provide them until May 9th uh, to, to come back with more details for council. Um, so I'm just wanting to clarify with you what our options are going forward as council so that we don't do something like close this public hearing and say, wait, that wasn't where we wanted to go. So I'm gonna turn it over to you for some options. For sure, thank you, Madam Mayor. So uh, you, as always, council has a few different options at hand. The first one is, is that if uh, council needs more information uh, from the applicant or, or otherwise, uh, you can adjourn the public hearing and table the item to a future date to continue the public hearing to bring back that, uh, that additional information. Uh, as I noted, you'd have to conclude the public hearing before May the 9th. Uh, if you don't, then the applicant has the option. It's not, as, it's not an, a, uh, a certainty, but they have the option that they can appeal you not making a decision. Uh, if you close the public hearing, you then have the options to uh, approve it or reject it uh, as normal or approve it with a condition. Uh, but you don't have to make that decision today. So you have 60 days to make a decision after you've closed the hearing. So 60 days to put the second reading and third reading on the table for, for votes. Is that cleared up? 
And I guess I should also state that if it is approved, if it's given second and third reading, then at that point you have 90 days to enter into a development agreement if, if that's the will of council. I know it's a lot of different timelines here. A lot of different options, yes. All right, so I think before I go around our council table here, uh, Vic and Dennis, I would ask, do you have any thoughts on, on what you would like to be doing? You mentioned, you know, in terms of clarifying. Um, so I, I'm gonna put it to you both before we discuss as a council of how how we could possibly move forward here. Uh, it seems to me that the information that you need, um, most of it is gonna be really dependent upon, I think, what you want to have in your development agreement in terms of you know, how, what, what's gonna be fitting you know, with the municipality's you know, plans. Um, you know, my preference is I think we, uh, you know, just proceed, you know, with our application as to uh, rezoning, and then we can work out the details and uh, I think, you know, sort of come up to some sort of resolution in terms of what this is actually going to be later on. You know, we're, we have a lot of different options as to, you know, what the, um, what the development, you know, can and, and could be. Um, but it's really important to get it right in terms of, you know, making sure that it has a really, really good fit. And I think the the best fit is not keeping it as a residential, a rural residential, but really going into a mixed use and perhaps a CH is seems to be the best category from uh, from our perspective. I appreciate, I appreciate your input on that. Thank you. I'll go around our, our virtual table here and see. Um, Councillor Bersetti, I'll, I'll start with you and work my way around. Yes, sir. You know, I just want to clarify. It says 90 days that we have to do the DA. That's if, I guess, the two parties aren't working on it. Like, it could take six months to do a DA, but if all of a sudden one party decides we're not getting along after 90 days, is that's probably when they could approach. I know there's no legislation clarifying that, so... Some DAs, normal ones that have not been done in my time on council have taken longer than that. So for, for sure, I mean, good, good point. The, the whole purpose, as I understand it, behind Bill 37 is to ensure that all parties involved in an application are working in a timely manner. You know, that I'm, I'm sure there's probably some councils, not this one, out there in uh, Manitoba that uh, aren't working quickly. Or, or aren't working um, uh, in good faith, so to speak. So what the legislation says is that if after 90 days, the two parties have not come to some sort of agreement, then the applicant has the option to appeal that to the municipal board. It's not a, a, a for sure thing that they have to do. I think if both parties are, uh, are working in good faith and you know both parties need a little bit more time, all the parties here tonight seem to be reasonable, I don't see why you couldn't take a little more uh, more time. That's all the legislation says is that uh, you know if you haven't come to an agreement, the option to appeal is uh, is there for the applicant. So, thank you, Mr. Eno, Councillor Preg, and where are your thoughts on how we should move here? My thoughts is I really need more info on this. And if we get the more info, we can go for the main night. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Kleiber? I, I think I have to concur with Councillor Buschetti. I think that from what was described tonight, this is really, it's partly agricultural, or it's mostly agriculture, and it's partly offices to for a business, uh, a, a business of agriculture. So I'm not sure the right zoning has been applied for here. Um, I think if we were, uh, if the applicants would have defined this more for themselves, what they were really doing here, uh, I think they would have applied for different zoning. So I, I don't think the zoning is fitting what the use is actually for. So I think it has to either be further defined 
or a new zone is applied for. And uh, maybe there might be conditional uses, I don't know. Uh, if you're allowed offices in, agri in an agricultural zone, if you're putting up a nursery. I mean, the nursery was mentioned and um, there is some growing that's gonna be going on. So I am i don't want to approve a CH and then have to come back and say, why did you put a nursery up? I mean, clearly they wanted to do this. And I, I, I think it's great that they're doing this research. I think it's great that they're doing the sustainability uh, portion of it, it's fantastic. Um, but I don't think this is the zone. That's that's my thought on it. Uh, as far as tabling it, um, I guess we could, but are we going to then allow um, this nursery or this agricultural piece into that zone? I think we have to ask ourselves that question if we're gonna table. And if we're not going to do that, then we might as well do the reading and make the decision. That's kind of my thought. Thank you, Councillor Kleiber. Councillor Link? For these applicants, I think the zoning is premature. I think they should, I think they should think with one another about what they really want. And once that's settled, come back. I'd, I'd like to see I'd like to see a, a, a voluntary withdrawal of this and firming up of plans. That's all. Thank you, Councillor Link. Um, uh, I share concerns about not knowing what's happening here, um, and I understand that under the commercial highway zone, there's so much that's permitted and not permitted. And I understand uh, Mr. Eno's comments that we can go through that table and say, we're okay with this, but we're not okay with this. We're okay with this, but we're not okay with that. And that some of the things that they're proposing and talking about doing aren't even on that table and, and would not appear. I understand that. My concern is I don't want to see our staff and administration doing that behind closed doors with the applicants, bringing it to council to approve a DA uh, seeing that and, and seeing that process without that being really very public. And I'm really concerned that, that as applicants, that you guys have, have the right intentions and want to bring something commercial here and have it fit the area, but we have absolutely no idea and neither do the residents. And I'm really concerned about that. So my feeling about this is, you know, you've done some work, you've, you've taken out a zoning uh, amendment application, which is not cheap. And, and you've come to us knowing that you want to expand that area and that it's not residential, but I would like to give you guys the opportunity to, to come back to us and say, when, when we sit down with your administration and it's lawyer to lawyer and we're working on a development agreement about what we can and what we can't do, that council already knows that, the public has seen that in public about this is what we're going to be sitting down with administration and asking to do on this land. And I'm just really concerned to approve this and say, you guys will all figure that out behind the scenes. I'm really not okay with that. I, I think that our residents deserve to know what's coming here, that council deserves to see what is it that you guys are gonna be working on on a DA before it comes back to us for a vote and approval. So my feeling is, is to give you until May and, and maybe even longer, if we're both in agreement, I know Bill 37 says May 9th, but if, if we can both agree, uh, as you, the applicant, and as counsel, if you need a bit more time than that, that we bring you back and we have a good sense of, you know, if, if we get this approved by council and we're going to create a development agreement, this is exactly what we're asking to do. Are you okay with that? And can your staff start on a DA? the way this process is right now is concerning me. I don't want to be seeing those things done behind closed doors. I think we've really been a very transparent council in terms of the public decisions and, and everything that's coming, whether it's retail or residential, has been really out in the public. That's where I would want to go. Uh, and, and either our next planning meeting is May 12th, which is very close to May 9th. If this goes up on the May 12th uh, agenda and the public hearing is 
is uh, remained open and you guys can present, you know, this is the things that we would want uh, to possibly do and have here and, and have your administration put in a DA and these are the things that we that we're okay not doing. I really think we need some clarity here about what's happening. Is Council uh, in agreement that we could uh, adjourn this until uh, the next planning meeting of May 12th, which is very close to the 9th, and we include it in a regular planning meeting? See nods. Councillor Lincoln, Councillor Kleiber, is that something that you would be supportive of adjourning to May 12th? I just don't know how legislative, if that would uh, cause us some legal issues down the road, if somebody would come back and say you didn't follow legislation. Um, so uh, I'm I'm in favor of postponing it, but I, I don't know, maybe we need to call as much as I dislike spending extra money, um, but maybe we should call a special meeting so we stay in line with the legislation. Uh, maybe our planner could speak to that. I, I would prefer to stay with legislation if we can. Sure. I can ask our planner. I know Mr. Eno represents every municipality as developer here, so I know it's it might be challenging. So what I can offer is, is similar to what I've said before. If, if council has not dealt with the public hearing within 90 days, once again, the applicant could appeal that to the municipal board. Um, now, that being said, I mean, you, you have May 12th is very close to that. Uh, I think the the purpose of Bill 37 was to prohibit councils from uh, overstepping or or unfoundly delaying things. Uh, I think if maybe the applicant were to uh, verbally agree to that here at the council meeting and on YouTube, as everyone can see it, uh, I think that'd probably be be okay. Uh, could the applicant still submit an appeal? I guess they could, but by the time May 12th comes around, uh, it, it, an appeal to the municipal board unlikely, likely probably wouldn't even be processed, you know, by the by the Thursday versus the uh, versus the Monday. So, uh, my advice would be that if the council's or sorry, if the applicant's okay with that, and can tell us that today, then you're you're probably in a good in a good state. Thank you, Mr. Eno. Appreciate the clarification on that and. I think the will of Council is to be working with the applicants on this as opposed to flat out defeating something without the information, which then puts the applicants in a position where they couldn't reapply for a zoning amendment for one year, I believe, from, so with the options in front of Council, if there's concern or lack of information, um, as opposed to tabling this to adjourning it to May 12th, if Council decides on this tonight, that might be the option of that it's there that don't get to come back for a year. So I'm going to ask you both uh, Vic and Dennis, are you all right if we uh, adjourn this to May 12th and give you some time to uh, get some more information for Council so that you're not reapplying and, and there's not the potential that Council could vote this down and and delay this a year. Um, I'll have to defer to Dennis, but I'm pretty sure that uh, you know he's okay with uh, uh, providing more information. I think what we would like um, from Council is a little bit, I guess, clarity on what it is that you're concerned with. Now, and the reason I say that is the, um, the greenhouse was just one, um, the greenhouse showroom, as opposed to an operation, we have no intention of, of of necessarily making this into the equivalent of what we have up there in, in Dauphin. Uh, Vic, if you don't mind, I'd like to speak because I think we would really appreciate the 12th and we'll give you a written statement with a much clearer plan on uh, what we see forward because I can see where we've put out um, some miscommunication or uh, put out uh, a message that um, is not our intention. So we would really appreciate the May 12th extension and sending you uh, an update and a, a refined uh, application or supplement to the application, whatever the right terminology for giving you additional information is. Uh, 
Hello? Is Mayor Christian frozen? Yeah, I think so. Oh, can you hear me now? Yep. Okay, sorry, sorry about, that. about that. Thank you, Dennis. I think that gives you guys an opportunity to look at that chart and, and whether you're speaking directly with Mr. Eno or Ms. Elias between now and May 12th, you can look at that table of what would be permitted in, in commercial highway and, and have some clarity of what it is you're, you're intending to do there. And it makes it much easier for council to go forward that way. And we you have really... that option to go to the public between now and then in a month as well. Uh, and, and maybe a Zoom open house or some kind of public engagement to, to provide some clarity of that there's public support for, you know, a storefront talking about greenhouses, but not a greenhouse. So I think if you guys have clarity there, it will absolutely help. Okay. Perfect. Then Ms. Reno, I would say to you then, do I just need a resolution, be it resolved that we adjourn this public hearing to uh, May 12th? Is that all I need? That's exactly right. Perfect. All right. That is my resolution. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Brissetti, seconded Councillor Prague. Any further discussion? Hearing and seeing none, I will call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed? And that is carried. We will see you both again on May 12th. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, we are now on item 6.1, resolution for subdivision. I will uh, read the resolution to, actually, Mr. Eno, I'm gonna have you present and we'll read the resolution after. There is no public hearing as everyone is aware on this item because it's on an existing road. And so there's no public hearing for this subdivision. And Mr. Eno, I will turn it over to you to present your report. I think Mr. Eno's frozen now. Can you hear us, Derek? There we go. Have we got you back, Mr. Eno? No. Oh. Must be the weather. Sorry, everyone kind of froze there for a minute. You're still frozen, Mr. Eno.
We'll give Mr. Eno a few more minutes here. We got you back, Mr. Reno. We seem to be having that kind of evening. Yeah, you're all frozen to me, but can you see, you can see my screen? Now you're moving. He moves temporarily and then he's gone. Madam Mr. Reno will work for like 10 seconds, Mr. Reno, and then not. Oh, there we go. We might have you. I think we might have you back. Can you hear us okay? I can hear you. I can't see anyone, and Zoom keeps kicking me out for some reason. We can see you moving now and we can hear you. That's promising. Okay, well, perhaps I'll just share my screen and, and continue on. Sure, and we'll let you know if we've lost you. Okay, okay, thank you. Oh, it looks like the host has disabled my screen sharing. Sorry, Lainey, can I get my screen sharing back? My apologies, you're added back, Derek. Thank you. Once you freeze so up, that's it, we cut you off. <laughs> <laughs> Thank Fair you, Mr. Reno, go ahead. I guess the internet thinks it's already Easter week, so. Okay, so I'm sharing my screen now. Uh, this is a subdivision application, uh, S22-2945. It's for three properties located along Capulist. Uh, the applicants propose to take those three properties and split them into four. All the properties meet the, uh, the zoning, lot size, lot width requirements. And here's the property out, the properties outlined in black with the, uh, the new neighborhood uh, just to the north. And this is the church site, the new church that's being constructed as we speak. And here's what the applicant's proposing to do is just uh, reshuffle some of the uh, lot lines along Capulus. Uh, it turns out they don't actually need all the land uh, for their, their church and school, so they're going to create uh, three properties that can be used for, uh, for highly commercial uses along Capulus, uh, as, uh, as I guess originally intended. Uh, this has been shared with the provincial departments. There's no uh, major concerns. Uh, just a, a few different um, uh, requirements. And should this be approved from council, we're recommending uh, five conditions. Uh, one, that the applicant submits confirmation from the CAO that all taxes uh, have been paid. Number two, that the applicant provides a revised drainage and lot grading plan uh, for uh, review by the municipality. Number three, that the owner enters into a supplemental development agreement with the municipality to address things like drainage and design standards. Number four, the applicant submits confirmation from uh, Manitoba Hydro that easements have been entered into, as well as confirmation from uh, Manitoba Conservation related to drainage. So that's all I have for you, Madam Mayor. If there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you, Mr. Eno. I'll go around and see if there are any questions for you. Councillor Prague, any questions for Mr. Eno? Mr. Hino, these new lots, would they be in front of that 
the church and the school there? Yes, they're going to be right fronting along Catalyst. So then that will obstruct the view on Catalyst towards the schools, am I correct? Yes, it would. Thank you. That's all I need to know. Thanks. Councillor Kleiber, any questions for Mr. Eno? Mr. Eno, how was it going to obstruct the view of the school when lot four is their lot and it's their driveway? Well, I guess it depends on what angle you're looking at. If you're traveling east or west outbound uh, new buildings might obstruct the uh, the view of the uh, of the school uh, but you're all right that they will have a driveway that uh, that goes straight all the way back to the property and uh, pardon my um, um I'm just wondering what are the the lots the one two three I'm, I'm just trying to see the one two three are they going to be commercial highway still Yes, they're still zoned as commercial highway. Okay, so if they want to do anything different, they have to come back to us on that and rezone that. Exactly. Okay, thank you. Councillor Link, any questions for Mr. Eno? Uh, just to clarify, they want the driveway between two lots, looks like a very large space. And they're not going to use the driveway onto, was it Park View Point Drive then? Um, I think that was an intention. I could be wrong. I think that was an intention a few years ago, but it looks like now they're going to be using the driveway access off of Catalyst. Okay. Um, I guess it would be up to them whether or not they wish to buffer the area uh, between their property and the commercial properties. I don't know. Just a comment. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Link. Councillor Bassetti? Well, this seems to. This seems to have changed quite a bit from when it first was presented to us a few years ago. Because, correct me if I'm wrong, wasn't the school originally going to be right on Capitalis and then other stuff all behind it? Like this, this seems to be changing as as it evolves, I guess. And you know, it it's I guess not fair to the area. People are buying into an area, seeing a plan that they're you know, buying into and all of a sudden now there's more commercial and there could eventually on those three lots along Capitalist be six buildings if we look at the rest of Capitalist the way it's been going, one building at the front, one building at the back. And then with that school, like it, it's going to make so much congestion in that little corner between the people leaving the development, people coming and going, buses coming and going to the church and up to possibly six buildings in, in those three lots. So. A lot of stuff has changed here, and it's it's kind of misleading when we see this kind this kind of stuff coming up. That's all I had was more of a comment. So, thank you, Councillor. Yeah, concerning from the open house and the changes, no uh, no questions from me. I will read the resolution, and then if there's further discussion from Council, we can discuss further. Be resolved that the Council in the Roman Municipality of West St. Paul under Section 1251 of the Planning Act approve subdivision application S22-2945 from property located at 691, 727, and 745 Capitalist Drive to subdivide the existing three lots into four lots, ranging between 1.66 to 19.98 acres in size subject to the following conditions. One applicant owner submits confirmation in writing from the chief administrative officer of the municipality that taxes on the land to be subdivided for the current year, plus any arrears have been paid or arrangements satisfactory to council have been made. 
two applicant owner submits a revised drainage slash lot grading plan to be revised revised by a qualified engineer and submitted prior to any development in the to the satisfaction of the municipality to ensure that the proposed property does not drain into or impede drainage from neighboring properties Two applicant owner to enter into a supplementary development agreement with the municipality to address but is not limited to servicing drainage and revised design and landscape standards Four applicant owner submits written confirmation to the RRPD from Manitoba Hydro that an easement easements have been entered into with Manitoba <coughs> Hydro with respect to existing and or future facilities associated with the subdivision and a plan of easement as required by the Real Property Act has been provided. Registration of the agreement will be included as a condition of the final certificate of approval, contact information as listed. And five, applicant owner submits confirmation from the drainage and water rights licensing branch of Manitoba Conservation and Climate that the applicant has satisfied all requirements from the agency as detailed in the correspondence from October 25th, 2021. These include, if required, approval of all engineer drainage plan, approval of hydraulic design calculations, and obtaining a water rights license. Further information and contact information is included. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Bassetti, seconded Councillor Link. Any further discussion on this item? Councillor Kyber, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I'm just wondering to the planner, when I'm looking at the uh, first page, it looks very small, the, the fourth lot. But then when I look on the, on the second page where the proposal is, the, the fourth lot uh, looks pretty big. Um, now, the fourth lot, that is the total overall um, dimension, right? 19 acres. 19 point, looks like. Correct. Yeah. Almost just under 20 acres for the, the yeah. I'll call the church site. Yeah. yeah. The fourth lot looks pretty big. Here's my concern. This is going to house quite a few students. Um, I know when I, my kids were going to school, private school, that there's a queue that forms to pick up your kids. And so is that lot four going to be used for people? Are they going to pave it? Are they, has, have they said anything about paving it and queuing cars there waiting for their kids? What is the intent of that fourth piece there at the front? Do we know? Uh, I can't recall exactly from the uh, from the building permit plans and the site development plans, but I believe it's just a uh, a driveway roadway access to the rear of the property where the the school and the church are being constructed. Okay, and is it possible for a road to now go onto that that main street? Uh, what's the name of the main street there that goes down Parkview Point Road? Is that Parkview Point Road? Can they still put a driveway in there to go in and out? Is that still possible? I'm not sure if it is or not. Okay, so basically what you're saying then is we possibly don't have a choice on this because they have to have a driveway somewhere, don't they? They, they do, and they have frontage onto Capulis, and there's uh, there's already something there. What I can tell you is that building permits have been issued, and and the review from administration has made sure that it's adhered to the development agreement. So the development's going forward, I guess is what I can say. Okay. All right, so there's not really any cause here at this point to decline this. They have to have a driveway, right? Yes, and I believe that's already the driveway perfect. anymore. Yeah. The, I guess the question is, do we want to let them subdivide the rest of the property into those three lots? That's really the question here. Driveway's not the issue, right? Correct. Thank you. Go ahead, Councillor Bassetti. Lot four is the whole school site, isn't it? Just clarifying. Yeah, that's the big one. Any other comments for discussion? Go ahead, Councillor Link. 
uh, Councillor Clymer is right on uh, cars queuing up to drop off and pick up students. If, uh, do we have any idea if most of the school population is going to be bused? Um, is, do we know that? Because that might alleviate a, a big problem because it can be a huge problem for schools. Do we know? Uh, Madam Mayor, if I may, our office doesn't have any of that type of information. We don't know how they're managing the uh, transportation of students or even parishioners in and out of the property, assuming cars. Thank you. Mr. CEO? We don't have any data from them, but we know this. Uh, the only people that uh, uh, come to the school uh, by in the local neighborhood or in Parkview Point, the rest are going to have to be coming either by bus or car to the uh, to the school. A couple of concerns from me, um, Councillor Bersetti pointing out about the plans changing from the open house and having smaller commercial lots is a little concerning on how much can be squished in there. Um, I share Councillor Link's comments about buffering, particularly on lot three that is now going to back on to residential houses that are already built right there. And so what that buffer looks like when now there's an additional commercial added in there for building. So I have, I have some concerns. If there's no further uh, discussion, then I will call for the vote. All those in favor? Opposed? And that is defeated. And I believe we have one more planning item, Mr. Planner, with you on here this evening. Uh, 6.2 first reading bylaw 2022-5. I will refer back to you, Ann. Of course, thank you, Mayor. Uh, I, I don't have much of a presentation on this because uh, as per usual, it's just a first reading. Uh, there are no properties involved in this, uh, in this bylaw amendment. It's a text amendment. And essentially uh, the municipality is looking to make some, some changes or what I would say is improvements to the existing zoning bylaw. Uh, by undertaking a variety of different uh, amendments to ensure that the direction in the, both the development plan and your secondary plans are uh, are implemented. Uh, some of those amendments, I, I just create a list here for you, just sort of summarizing them as to update some antiquated references. There's things that refer to, uh, I guess, incorrect provincial departments and such. Updating all those kind of things makes good sense. Uh, including new uh, site design and building design related requirements rather than having them within your uh, development agreements, uh, having a lot of that stuff put into your zoning bylaw. Uh, and I guess just as a reminder, as we pointed out before, a uh, development agreement can be appealed to the municipal board, but once the standard's in a zoning bylaw, that's it. The developer has to follow it. So uh, updating the signage requirements, I know that was an issue, and updating uh, some definitions, as well as including a new uh, mixed use zone. Uh, so as I said the, before, the, the amendment does not include actually rezoning any properties, uh, just including that new zone. So this is just before you for first reading. Uh, we would suggest that uh, you could give it first reading, and then that would trigger the process to uh, schedule a public hearing and then, of course, circulate it to the government departments and uh, see if there's any comments, bringing all that information back to a public hearing for you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Mr. Eno. <clears throat> any questions from Council uh, for Mr. Eno? And just remembering that um, we've had a couple of education briefings on this with our consultant, Ms. Lim. And now uh, Mr. Eno will be able to take a look at this and come back with comments uh, and a report for council as well. Go ahead, Councillor Link, and then Councillor Cliver. Well, I'm looking at page four. Um, update minor variance provisions. 
And I'd like to know the rationale for this because I don't think that was part of the original presentation. Could be wrong, that was very quick and quick presentation. Uh, the rationale for this uh, number six and how will this affect the look of a community? Uh, I have more questions. Should I just go ahead and ask them or? Go ahead, Mr. Eno. I, I guess what I could state is that um, uh, your your consultant, Ms. Lim, has uh, has taken you through a process to come up with uh, with these uh, these changes or improvements. I don't have. I wasn't working on the uh, on the amendment itself. So, as to uh, rationale or uh, or a process that you've gone through, I, I don't have those answers for you. Uh, but I think Ms. Lim would be able to address those uh, quite handily at a uh, at a public hearing, which I understand she's going to be attending. I would like to comment um, that it's not simply a text amendment. And I think for the public to take this in at a public hearing uh, would be quite a feat. And I, I, I am having trouble with it being fair to the public. I think there's enough in here beyond simple text amendments that it deserves an open house of sorts. So people can hear from Miss Lim and be able to ask her questions at an open house. Then it would be appropriate to follow up with the public hearing. But there is a lot in here and council as a group has had one presentation. We have had a few days to look at it on our own. We haven't had an opportunity to discuss it really. Um, so I've got some concerns about giving first reading to this, to this bylaw. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Link. Councillor Kleiber, go ahead. So many questions. I have. I mean, uh, we were told this was a cleanup, maintenance. We've got a whole brand new zone going in here. Um, that's significant. Uh, just as an example, uh, storage containers are now going to be allowed at, after, if you have more than 1.4 acres. So that's 3.9.4. Uh, we're going to have storage containers all over the place now. If you have more than 1.4 acres, well, Everything across the street from me can now have storage containers. I'm not in favor of that. Um, <laughs> there's a whole bunch. 3.9.3.2, uh, single family dwellings can only have one attached garage. Interesting. Um, I don't know if people will like that. If you're, we're limiting them. Um, there's some contradiction in some of the sections. Um, there was some square footage suggested for commercial, uh, this commercial mixed zone. I would like to know who came up with the square footage and how that was decided as to how that, you know, office is gonna be this. There was a whole bunch of different ones. This was on page nine of the document. Uh, then we have a new, a completely new type of building going up. That's four stories, that's multifamily and is, CM zone. That's concerning. It's going to be partially commercial and partially multifamily residential. This is a big change. So we are now going to allow people to run a business on the bottom and have multifamily on the top. Um, and apparently it can be two or four stories or all kinds of things. So I would like some more cl clarification with some of these amendments. Uh, one one sign amendment was allowing people to have 323 square feet of a of a sign. That's a pretty big sign. Um, page 40, uh, there was section is that we don't have to look. We don't uh, multifamily RMF one, RMF two, and I think there was one other zone doesn't have to comply with the secondary plan any longer. We're just going to take that out. 
Now, I, I, I'm kind of concerned about that. Why would we just take that out? We just talked about the secondary plan tonight and how we should conform to the secondary plan. And then on page 40, we're saying, um, no, we're going to take that out and it's only going to be RS service residents zone shall only be applied to lands located within the service area instead of saying and must comply with the policies of the secondary plan. Now, I, I don't know why we would take that out. So I, there, there's so many concerns I have here with so many different sections. Uh, one of the other concerns that I have is that we're still going to allow educational facilities in rural residential when we're allowing educational facilities in other zones. So we're allowing uh, educational services in two other zones, but we're still going to allow it in rural residential. One of the problems that we had is we had a school that came up without our knowledge because they bought rural residential property and it was allowed. I think that for me, that should be removed now because we have two other zones that allow uh, education. Open space was one of them, I recall, and there was another one. Um, there's a new, um, on page 52, there was a designation called neighborhood commercial. I have no idea what that is. What is neighborhood commercial? What does that mean? Uh, it's a permitted use on page 52. Uh, so there's a whole, whole bunch of issues. Um, we're changing from exterior storage from conditional to permitted in some areas. And then in M1 and M2, in some areas, it's conditional. I, I'm surprised at that. Um, the other thing that I wanted to see, and I don't see it here, and I, I hear that I've, I've brought this up before, but I'm, I'm going to speak to it. And that is um, in the previous council, public hearings were removed for subdivision. And the reason being given is it would adhere to the planning act. Now I always hear how we can do better than the planning act. One of the issues that's arisen while I've been on council is different things being subdivided without uh, public hearing and without resident input. Case in point, we just did one, subdivision of capitalists and uh, subdividing a property into three different pieces in front of a school. Now, I'd like to hear some public input from that, but because an existing road is there, no public input. There was an issue on Kennebec, same thing. There was an issue on Blackdale Road, same thing. There was issue on Slater Road, same thing. We've had numerous issues where People are being affected by subdivisions, but there's no public hearing and they're not being notified. And then surprise, they have a subdivision happening next door and they're not happy about it. And, and we heard from people on Tina Beck how they were not happy about it. Uh, people aren't notified and uh, they can split their property and there's no opposition until it's done, but there are warranted reasons sometimes for opposition and we should we should reinstitute a public hearing for subdivisions that have existing roads and i don't think that that's a bad thing i don't think that is uh against the planning act what it is is enhancing the planning act and enhancing it for our residents so there is a whole lot of issues here i'm not going to go through each one i've got four pages of notes so it isn't simply maintenance. It isn't simply, we're just doing definitions. We're adding an entire new zone, which brings an entire different type of development into our area. And that's something that should be, uh, should have public input. That's something that should have an open house that people should be aware that that's gonna be happening instead of us passing it and not telling anybody or not really making it known to people through, a, through public engagement, that's what we're doing. So those are my concerns and I'm done, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kleiber. Uh, good points to raise at the public hearing. Councillor Bassetti, any comments regarding zoning? No, oh, thank you. Councillor Bragg? No, oh, thank you. Just a couple of comments from, from my perspective. Um, this has been three years in the, in the making uh, that council's fully aware of. 
Uh, and so just a reminder, um, the plans and, and Jennifer Lim coming to council began uh, April, uh, March 2nd. Uh, she shared what she would be looking at with council and had a meeting just with council about uh, what it is she would be looking at. And at that time, uh, she talked to council and administration let council know that all of the input from council for three and a half years on our existing zoning bylaw and the issues that we have and have raised as members of council regarding signage, storage containers, um, concerns that we had raised about multifamily, concerns uh, about house size, um, things that uh, Mr. Eno's been uh, tallying up and uh, David Patton, the planner before uh, that was working with us, they've been keeping a running tally of the things that we as members of this council have wanted to address. And they've been doing that for three years. And so during that three year period, we've talked about it. Um, we've updated you as members of the Red River Planning Board uh, my role and, and as well as Councillor Brissetti's and prior to that Councillor Prague, that Mr. Eno was tasked with uh, by the board reviewing, updating every single zoning bylaw in the Red River Planning District, including ours. So all of you have been updated about that and Mr. Eno had been working on that. The problem is uh, they're very busy down there and they've lost some staff as Council's very well aware and Mr. Eno is now the uh, planner, not only for West St. Paul, but for many municipalities uh, as a new planner's been brought on. And so the time frame for Mr. Eno to work on and update our zoning bylaw on all of these issues that are somehow surprising members of council that we actually have given to Mr. Eno in terms of signage, storage containers. Um, he's been busy working on that and, and can't be doing that right now with what's going on. So council is fully aware that uh, a consultant has been hired to come in and work on this uh, and then of course be reviewed uh, and looked at by Red River Planning in terms of uh, does it meet those things as well and the requirements that they have. And so this has been an ongoing process for three years and it's the feedback from council and the feedback that we're hearing from residents. And then of course we, we brought uh, Jennifer Lim in as she worked on her final draft and she came in uh, on April 4th for an education briefing. And she presented this document to council that's really very extensive and has lots of information as you've pointed out with no suggestion that this is simply just some text amendments. That's, um, that's absolutely not what, what's happening here. That's a tiny part of it in terms of references from, uh, from Selkirk planning and some language that needs to be fixed up. But we're all fully aware that there's a lot of changes here based on three years worth of uh, comments uh, and, and things that needed to be improved. So she prepared for council a really comprehensive guide document that walked us through every change she's making. And she suggested putting that uh, possibly online with the draft to walk people through because there are a lot of changes that council has requested. And so those things of signage and going best practice for city of Winnipeg, uh, the storage containers, um, some misinformation there in terms of it's just permitted. We talked about that and she walked us through, but she has a really uh, a detailed presentation for council and the public coming to a public hearing. The attached garages, one of the things council mentioned was to our planner, whether it be Mr. Eno or Mr. Payton, that houses are starting to look like multifamily with garages on one side and garages on another. So could you address that so we don't have houses that look like multifamily? And that's the message that Ms. Lim heard from council. And so she's included that. House size was brought up. This is shocking that house size would be included. Uh, we had an applicant come to council with a 19,000 square foot home. The message Jennifer Lim got was, maybe for big houses uh, exceeding a certain square footage, it should come to council that we shouldn't wake up one day and see a 19,000 square foot house uh, suddenly appear in West St. Paul. And so she got that message and has included that in the bylaw. Signage is an issue uh, that council raised because we were dealing with so many variances on signs because the permitted sign is something like four by four. And of course the public engagement is so critical and we had a community strategic plan and the community said to us, we would like a retail zone. We'd wanna make sure that uh, along where we've addressed some of the applicants today, uh, Windsor Plywood and in that area, that we actually have retail places to buy milk and places to eat at restaurants. 
And so council agreed, and we have this community strategic plan of what they told us for a town center and the current commercial zoning, as we know, could end up being something very different and not at all retail. And so council, you know, we have that strategic plan, we have that public engagement for the entire community with over 700 participants. And now uh, Ms. Lim is working that in to make sure what the residents want to have is actually what's going to happen. And as has been mentioned to council, there's a bit of urgency on this because big box stores are wanting to go in there. Um, commercial interest is there. And do we want to see things end up there that are yeah, commercial and fit within the commercial, but are in no way retail and in no way reflect the town center that residents have told us. So I'm, I'm looking forward to this coming back uh, a little shocked that that people are so surprised and that they've never heard of this uh, when this is three and a half years in the making. Uh, and so I appreciate that Derek's going to have a lot of work to go through to go through this uh, this document with all of the things that have been uh, in the queue and on the list ready to go in. And I look forward to the conversations that we're going to have about that publicly at the public hearing. We're at 10 o'clock, so uh, I'm going to have to have a, a resolution to extend the meeting to 1030 to get through this resolution. Can I have a mover? To extend our meeting to 1030, moved by Councillor Brissetti, seconded by Councillor Prague. I'll call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed? And that is carried. And I will read the resolution for first reading on this item. Be it resolved that bylaw 2022-5P being a bylaw of the Rural Municipality of West St. Paul to make various text amendments, some of which are intended to implement direction found in the development plan and apl applicable secondary plans and summarized as updating antiquated reference to RRPD, example RRPD, provincial legislation, etc., include new site and building design related requirements update signage requirements, update definitions, and include a new zone be read a first time. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Prague, seconded Councillor Busetti. We've gone around and had discussion on this around the table. Well, Council has a right to make further comments on the call to the question. Go ahead, Councillor Cliver. Um, I would say this, uh, we have never discussed as a council a new zone called commercial mixed use. So, um, I don't know where in the three and a half years I was then because we never ever discussed this new zone. And that is a discussion that council should be having, uh, especially with what is being proposed. So I hope we have that discussion at the uh, public hearing. And uh, I will come back with my four pages of notes at the public hearing and I'll go through each one one by one. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cliver. It would have been so great to bring those four pages to uh, Ms. Lim when we had our education briefing and she went through. Um, we I didn't just get a to chance. remind Council um, that she a had chance. a great picture and talked about that at the education briefing with well, no. retail underneath and housing above. And, and so uh, we could bring that picture up on screen, but I think she'll go over it again. And, you know, there's a lot of information and provide some clarity, but you know, there, all of this has been presented to council in a, in a package and I look forward to hearing more information from your four pages of notes. Councillor Brissetti, any further? Councillor Prague, Councillor Link. How long was our session with Ms. Lim? The first or the second session? The second session where, when she presented this uh, 52 page package or 50, yeah. The package. She had about a 56 page uh, slideshow and, and I think our meeting was over an hour and she walked yeah. it through and presented scenarios to us and talked about the retail with multifamily over top and the new zone. Um, that, that shouldn't be shocking. She yeah, talked about, about it and presented diagrams. Page. About a minute per page. And no discussion amongst council. We didn't have a discussion. Thank you. So just to be clear, there was opportunity for discussion and nobody had any comments or concerns. Well, but it's because it's we didn't get it until the day before. That. We got a 50 stage, 57 page document like the day before. So there wasn't time to go through it. And she said we Sorry. should do it on our own. Councillor Kleiber, you've had your opportunities, so we, we don't interrupt. 
everybody's had the opportunity to speak. This will come back to us. And in the end, I believe we'll have hours and hours that we'll have reviewed the zoning bylaw uh, information by the time we're done three readings of council and two education briefings. In addition to all of the time that we've spent sharing that information with Mr. Eno. I will call for the question on this item. I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Opposed? Recorded vote, please. I'm sorry, Councillor Link, it's too late. And those are opposed. And that is carried. All uh, right, I believe that is all the issues that we have uh, with our planner this evening. Thank you, Mr. Eno, for being available. My pleasure, Council. Nice seeing you all. Hope you have a nice Easter and a long weekend. You too, thank you. Go ahead, Councillor Bissetti. Since it's after 10, we've just finished planning. Is it, we're never going to finish the whole thing anyway? So, can we just either add this to another meeting or, hate to say it, call a special meeting if we have to? We're never going to finish all that in 25 minutes. So, it's already after 10. Mayor, may I suggest that we just do the uh, counts because you, I know that you want to get that done always and then adjourn? Good idea. Yep. Agreed. We'll go down to item B11, the, uh, the payroll monthly statements. Be it resolved that the payroll for the month of March as follows be approved as presented. Can I get a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Prague, seconded Councillor Busetti. All those in favor? Opposed, and that is carried. Thanks. Can I have a mover to adjourn the meeting for this evening? Moved by Councillor Prague, seconded by Councillor Busetti. All those in favor? Opposed, and that is carried. Thank you. Good night, everybody, and we'll arrange a special meeting for the rest of the agenda. <laughs>